April 8, 2024, please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord God bless America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Yes. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, shut that off. Thought I did. Sorry. You want to tell the audience to mute their phones? Yeah, I got to shut, shut that thing right off. Um, so, as you know, we had an election. Uh, we have newest member here, Sarah Call Colley, to our board, but we have to reorganize first. Um, so we're going to reorganize the board at this point for chair and vice chair. Mr. Chairman, I'm, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I make a motion we... Um, no, I'm going to nominate you to be chairman of the current board, next current board. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, guys, there will be a roll call. Oh, oh, yeah, roll call vote. We have uh, members oh. yep. participating remotely. Uh, Mr. Tigas. Aye. Mr. Priest. Aye. Mr. Colley. Aye. Mr. Spayo. Mike? Aye. Aye, okay. Aye. And I. And Mr. Oh. Chairman. Here we go. With that being said, I'd like to nominate Selectman Spayo for vice chair. And do we have a second on that? I'll second. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, roll call vote? Yes. Roll call vote. Mr. Tiggis? Aye. Mr. Priest? Aye. Mr. Crowley? Aye. aye. Mr. Spejo? You're going to say aye anyway. Mr. Aye. Miranda? Yes. Aye. aye. So, all in favor? Aye. All right. So, there's a there's new board right now. Thank you for your patience, and we are going to uh, move on from that point. There we go. Look at your work, Lynn. The efficiency. Wow, huh? Very nice. She was ready to go. Did you stop watch after that? So, I didn't have enough time to do it. Um, so the first thing on the agenda is an appointment. Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have our fire chief, uh, Andy Connerty, and assistant chief, Steve McLean, here for an appointment in the fire department. Good evening. Um, tonight I have, uh, I'm recommending Mr. Cody Kilbride for appointment to the position of firefighter paramedic. Uh, Mr. Kilbride comes to us from the Acton Fire Department where he's been employed there as a firefighter paramedic for two years already. Uh, he also works at a private ambulance company as a paramedic. <clears throat> he's been an EMT for five years and became a certified paramedic two years ago. He comes highly recommended from his current and former employers. He's already completed the Mass Fire Training Academy. Uh, he can basically get orientated at the Burlington Fire Department and go right to work. Uh, he holds uh, his paramedic certification, advanced cardiac life support, pediatric advanced life support, and cardiopulmonary resuscitation certification. I'm pleased to recommend Mr. Cody Kilbride for appointment to the position of firefighter paramedic at the Burlington Fire Department, effective April 22nd. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, with the Chief's recommendation, I wish to appoint Cody Kilbride uh, to the position of firefighter paramedic in the Burlington uh, Fire Department and ask that the board waive its 15-day waiting period. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Yes. Mr. Spayo. Aye. Aye. Does he vote twice? <laughs> I can't do that. Mr. Priest. Aye. Mr. Ziggis. Aye. And I'm an aye. So, congratulations, 500.
Okay. Uh, the next on the agenda is DPW Operations Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we got our DPW Director Brian White here for the, for the presentation to the board. Good evening. So I'm here uh, to recommend uh, appointment of our new operations manager um, after conducting interviews. Uh, I'm recommending uh, Mr. Anthony DeSimone. Uh, Mr. DeSimone has been working with us in the DPW for over four years, uh, first in our highway division and currently with our cemeteries and facilities division. Uh, prior to joining DPW, he worked uh, with our school department. Um, in addition to his experience in Burlington, he has over 10 years of experience uh, combined in construction and automotive repair. Uh, in automotive repair, his experience uh, includes operational and business responsibilities. Uh, Anthony has obtained a bachelor's uh, degree in business administration uh, in 2015 from Worcester State University. He holds a class A CDL, uh, class 2A, 1B, 4E, and 4G hoisting licenses and an unrestricted construction supervisor license. Um, so in, in addition to his impressive resume, uh, in his time with the DPW has shown a, a great deal of determination and drive uh, and has earned a lot of respect from his peers and supervisors for his work ethic and uh, self-drive. Uh, I think Anthony's gonna be uh, a great fit for this position and I recommend his appointment. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, with Brian's recommendation, I wish to appoint Anthony D. Simone uh, to the position of Operations Manager in the Public Works Department and ask that the board waive its 15-day waiting period. So moved. Second. So moved. Second and roll call vote. Sarah? Aye. Mike? Aye. Nick? Aye. Jim? Aye. Chairman's aye. Five zero zero. Congratulations. Shots. Good. We're good. Okay, moving along, we got the uh, overnight work priority in Wilmington Road. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have uh, DPW Director Brian White uh, to request a waiver from the town's construction hours bylaw uh, in order to perform some uh, very crucial work to the water uh, system uh, overnight. And uh, Brian, you want to take over and tell the board about the, the project? Uh, sure. So in, in the backup, I believe you have a, a map kind of showing the location of um, the work they were proposing. Uh, essentially, we identified uh, two faulty Watergate valves. One is uh, currently leaking, uh, the other is broken closed. Um, so in order to fix those gates, uh, a water shutdown is necessary to cut them out and replace them. Um, unfortunately, in this area, that water shutdown would involve shutting, up, shutting down the commercial plaza. Uh, historically, we look to, whenever there's a commercial shutdown, we try to accommodate, um, try to accommodate the businesses and not shut them down uh, and, and lose their revenue. Uh, so we try to schedule those at night. Um, uh, typically, the businesses are in, uh, are a little more secluded. So um, this is obviously in more of a residential area, but um, what we're proposing is, is one night, um, shut down the water, uh, install the two new gates, 
Uh, this is it's a pretty complex um, T intersection there. Uh, there'll be four total new gates. Uh, two of them will be the night work, the, re the remaining work. Um, once we get the first two gates installed and can isolate the plaza, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll propose to do during the day, daytime hours um, to minimize disruption uh, for the resident side. All right, great. Thank you. Um, we'll start with questions. Jimmy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brian, what time do you intend on starting the work at night? Uh, so we are, we've looked into the businesses. I believe uh, Dunkin' Donuts closes at 10. It, uh, either Laundies or Dunkin' Donuts, one of the two restaurants. Um, so we would, we would uh, perform most of the work that we can, cutting the road, excavating, plating it during the daytime hours. So we'll, we'll try to get as much of the work out of the way as possible during the day. Nighttime, uh, we'll wait till the last business closes, 10 o'clock or so, and, and try to get everything shut off. And uh, hopefully, we expect to get everything done in one night, um, uh, but it is construction, and you never know what you get into. Will it only affect that plaza, or will it affect the residents in the area? It will affect the residents as well. So um, the majority of Prouty, well, all of Prouty Road um, will be out without water. Um, uh, Wilmington Road down to about Wood, Wood Hill uh, will be without. Uh, Wilmington Road up to about Veterans Park will be without water. Uh, and then Elsine, which is a dead end right there, will be without water as well. Um, typically what we do um, for, for notification, so we don't quite yet have a clear date yet, of course, because we want to try to do the prep work as much as we can during the day. and We, we won't schedule the night work until we get all the, the daytime work done. But uh, we will use the reverse 911 system to send out messages uh, at least 24 hours before. Uh, and for water shutdowns, we do do uh, hand delivery notices to residences to let them know as well. Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, two members of this board who happen right. to live on Prouty Road will be thrilled. I, I was just going to say, I don't know which Prouty Road member I need to ask first. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yikes. I mean, yikes to any resident, right? Um, you know, so that it affects me, so what? Right, this could have happened anywhere. Um, in terms of daytime hour construction, is it going to affect, like, it's a very busy intersection, and obviously Wilmington Road is, is busier now than it's ever been before. In terms of like the, the bus, the, there's like a bus stop right there and things like that, are we going to be affecting that, or are we going to be kind of trying to try work around those sorts of things too? We'll certainly work around them. We, we always keep in mind the buses, uh, make sure that roads are plated or, or we're out of the way for the, for the bus time hours. Um, um, so yeah, once once that you know, there's still um, gates and stuff that need to be closed at, when we first get in. So by the time we're ready to actually get into the intersection, it's it's not till probably typically after the buses come through. Okay, and then you said there's there's no clear date targeted right now. So you're gonna what over the next couple of weeks assess and take a look at how bad it is, and then kind of pick some times to get in there. Yeah, so uh, it's on the top of our priority list because we do have Wilmington Road scheduled for paving this year, so obviously we want to get out of the road uh, and not conflict with that. Um, it's, I think mainly it's going to be, be, well, because of the night work and personnel um, situation with night into daytime shifts, um, I, I think probably, I mean, we should, we should aim to have this done by no later than mid-May. Okay. Uh, but we'll watch weather forecasts, uh, uh, you know, coordinate the, the shutoffs. We'll try not to shut, uh, you know, this Alcine's the only road that will need multiple day shutdowns uh, because they're not back fed through. Right. Um, so we will try to be cognizant of not shutting them off two days in a row. Um, so we'll try to sp space things out. And, All right. and then once you do that plan and you communicate, you said 24 hours notice yep. to residents. Is there any way we can bump that to 48? I think that like something of this magnitude in the area, like folks are going to want to know sure. sooner. That's my that's my only request, Brian. Sure. I mean, I know it needs to happen. I just think that like if we can give residents a little, little more heads up, that they're going to be without water for you know on and off for say a week. Um, you know, forty dollars might give them because there's a lot of families in that area that you know sure. are going to wind up and figure out how to bathe their kids, backyard hoses or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But, <laughs> but it's all good. The work needs to get done. Thank you. Sarah? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so you said 10 o'clock potential shutdown of the water. 
how many hours do you estimate it being off for? Uh, typically, uh, for water shutdowns and, and gate water main work, it's uh, we always kind of use eight hours as the as the ballpark. Uh, th this is a lot of work, so unfortunately, this this plaza half the half the plaza is fed off of Prouty. Uh, the other half gets their water off of Wilmington. So, in order to minimize the amount of night work, we have to cut in two different spots at once, have two different crews working at once. So uh, because of that, we I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a fairly long night. If it was just one gate, um, it would be about half the time. I was just thinking, um, you know, you mentioned Dunkin' Donuts closes at 10. Their morning crowd is probably a little bit busier and more lucrative. I don't know what time they open, but I assume it's pretty early. So I don't know if it's worth pushing it to 9 p.m rather than 10, because their night crowd, I, I, mean, I know there's other people affected by this as well. I was just thinking about that one. Um, Dunkin' Donuts might want those early morning hours rather than those later night ones, sure. just a thought. Yeah, we can, we can confirm. Uh, I'll double check, make sure it's not Londy's and not the other way around. Um, and if, if, that's, if that's the case, we can have a conversation with Dunkin' Donuts and see if they prefer an earlier start. No other questions, thank you. Mike? Mr. Chairman, I think it's uh, actually Lonnie's that's open until 10. Okay. Um, so right, right. The total um, time the water will be out is just that night, right? Not the one two days after? Correct. So the night the night work, um, so so the night work, Prouty Road uh, residents will be without water, and the Wilmington Road residents up to Veterans Park should be without water. Once those two gates are in, the remaining Water shutdowns uh, shouldn't affect them. Um, the following gates will affect, we'll have a one day shutdown for um, for Wilmington Road to, to Wood Hill, so on the southern side. And well, unfortunately, I'll see we'll, we'll, we'll be shut down uh, for all the work. Gotcha, I know it's probably tough, but is there any way we can try and schedule the work that least impacts the businesses that next day in case things were to run longer. I know maybe earlier in the week might be better for like Londy's and I'm not sure what the, the little grocery is, but uh, just whatever we can do to, to make it as least impactful on those businesses as possible, I think uh, would be appreciated. Sure. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just, real quick, just go over it for the residents that are listening that live on those roads on how you're going to let them know whenever the date's going to be, whether it's going to be a letter, whether it's going to be uh, taking the, the signage out here, water will be shut down f at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I'll just go over that real quick. Um, we've done this before, it's not the first time, but just to give the residents an idea that it, how, how we're going to let them know in the business. I know you're going to talk to business, but you're not going to talk to every single resident. So you're not going to go, hey, how you doing? Yeah, so we do hand out notices to all the residences as well that we, that we okay. shut the water off. So th those are the, those, um, everyone that will be shut off for water will, will get a, a notice. Um, so check, check um, sometimes people don't use their front doors and might use others. So, so over the next couple of weeks, I'd advise residents to try to check places where, where we try to put it out of the weather so they don't get wet or blown away. Um, so we do hand, we will hand out those notices. We'll shoot for the 48-hour the notice for those. Um, um, and um, the reverse 911 system, we use that uh, pretty heavily. So uh, I would just uh, have residents, if, if they want to make sure they get the notices, double check that you signed up for the uh, code red reverse 911 system. You can do that. There's a link on uh, the town's main page uh, under the residence drop down tab, I believe. Uh, so just sign, sign up, make sure you receive those messages, uh, and you'll they'll also get notifications that way. Chairman, follow up? No. no, go ahead. Brian, does the DPW have the ability to create or uh, get temporary signage to put in the neighborhoods as well, just to let for those who don't get the note, they'll when they come home or walk, they'll see temporary signage saying water will be shut off on th on this date or whatever. Temporary signage in that area, as well to alert the uh, resident. 
Sure, yeah, we, um, so we do have the message board that we use pretty frequently out here on the common, um, so we can uh, look into using that. Um, we only have one of those, so I can, we, can, we can look in to see if we can get a, a second one. Um, but at, at least for the one that we do have, we can certainly try to line it up and put it perhaps probably on the, on the laundies somewhere in, in that area. It's highly visible. Thank you. I'll say, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, follow-up question. If I yes, sir. Uh, Brian, I was just thinking, there's a daycare in there, in that plaza, right? Have you had a chance to talk to them? I believe uh, we've talked to everyone as we were trying to confirm you know, we were hoping they would only be fed off of one street. So we, we were, we have been in quite a few tenants. We looked into trying to uh, somehow provide them temporary water from like a, a sewer pump station. It's not, we're not providing them sewer. Clean, <laughs> clean, clean water source, but um, trying to tie them over. Um, and, and it just isn't really a great way there. Uh, yeah, I guess the biggest thing I can offer is, is a, is a, Suggestion, if anything, is just let, let them know the dates as soon as we have them so that they can let the families know. And that way, if they're not going to have their kids go that day or whatever it is, because there's nothing worse than trying to drop your kid off in the morning and then being told, oh, no, sorry, we're closed today, or yep. getting that 9 p.m. phone call. Uh, you know, anything we can do to help alleviate you know, those, those families and those kids as well. Sure. Okay. I think my cat can stand up. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was incorrect. Lonnie is open until 9 every night. Except that Friday, Saturday, we go to 10, 8 o'clock on Sundays. And the Dunkin' Donuts is only open until 7 p.m. every night. So just wanted to share that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was a good bit of information, wasn't it? Yeah, go. Nice no, job, Michael. All right. Uh, any other further questions? Do I have a. This is going to be voted on, right? For motion? Yes. I have a motion? There's a, there's a hand up in the crowd. Oh, you got your hand up. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I just, just wanted to, to uh, say, actually. Sorry. Mr. Young, if you could come to the table with the microphone so folks can hear you. Sure. Thank you. Just identify yourself for the record. Yeah. Bob Young, uh, Three Valley Circle, Burlington, Mass. So I want to concur with what one of the selectmen said. I think I would say uh, inform early and inform often. Uh, if there's a big bid in most towns, I think the laws requires that you have to notice them, notice in a publication three separate dates. I've seen like, you know, three dates and they have to publicize it three times. So if we're gonna publicize bids, if we do it in that way in this town, uh, and I hear you're very open to all of this, but uh, I would just say, I agree that as Nick said, you know, things have to be done, but uh, give people as much notice. Uh, the other thing I thought sitting there was, some of us might remember the phrase, it's time to make the donuts. Uh, not all Dunkin' Donuts uh, locations make their donuts. This, I believe some of them get shipped in. So uh, if they do make the donuts and the water shut off, they might not be able to make donuts that night. So. So uh, maybe if I was going to guess, I'd say they may not make them there, but maybe it would be good to find out for sure. But uh, I think uh, things you shared, the questions, uh, say a little prayer and the good workmanship, and it'll be a good project. So I, I wish you all the best. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Bob. Do I sign this for you? Do I need to? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can I add another question, Mr. Chair? Who does? Me. Oh, you do. Yes. I'm, I'm looking down there. Who had a question? Go ahead. Um, and now I forget what it was. Oh, yes. So just in, in the, um, the, the spirit of notifying often and early, uh, maybe connecting with uh, the Burlington Buzz or BCAT and having them, I, they tend to pick up on things from DPW that I've seen them do in the past, but I don't know if there's any formal way that you could include them in your notification so that they can give people a heads up. Sure. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? We're all set. Everybody good? All right. Make a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the request for the overnight work on Prairie Wilmington Roads. I have a second. Second. Roll call vote. Ms. Michael? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Nick? Aye. Jim? Aye. Aye. 
Five zero zero. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Brian. Uh, next is an appointment. North Shore Water Resilience Task Force. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the North Shore Water Resilience Task Force is a group of communities that have gotten together uh, with their primary concern being the Ipswich River watershed. Uh, now, we don't actually have the Ipswich River uh, crossing through here in Burlington, but I do believe that uh, a portion of the Ipswich River watershed is in the northwest part of the town. So uh, we've been participating with this group uh, for quite some time now. Uh, your current appointee has been Conservation Director John Keeley. Uh, and what I wish to uh, suggest to the board with John's pending uh, retirement uh, towards the end of May, uh, that we appoint uh, Eileen Coleman um, as the town's representative on the North Shore Water Resilience Task Force. So Eileen, as you all know, is the Assistant Conservation Director. So that would be my recommendation to you. I do believe uh, this isn't my appointment, this is uh, the board's appointment. So uh, you'll have to make that motion on your own. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions or concerns? You know, if, if, if John were here, I would have asked him how, how it's going. I was just curious. I, I know it's been almost two years, right, since they, we first got off the ground? Well, as an outsider looking in, it seems as though there's been quite a bit of work done. I do believe that they're rolling out a new website. Uh, they've uh, attracted some grant funding and things of that nature. And uh, we've been a part. I think we actually were the point person on one of the actual state grants for the group. So um, I think they're doing a lot of work. Um, if, if you're on the North Shore, you would know that that river uh, really suffers from, it runs dry, um, and there's quite a few communities that get their um, drinking water from it. So um, it's really of utmost importance that uh, you know people work together to sort of make that uh, a vibrant uh, stream again. So. <clears throat> but no, no, no other questions, Mr. Chair. No. Sarah? No questions. Mike, any questions on this? No, shaking his head, no. Okay. Uh, Need a motion? Motion to approve the appointment of Eileen Coleman to the North Shore Water Resilience Task Force. Second. Motion, Mike, made, motion made and seconded. Uh, Mike? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Nick? Aye. Jim? Aye. Chairman's aye. Thank you, everybody. Okay, now, citizens' time. No, we missed one. Oh, did I miss one? My bad. Sorry, Pete. Slow down. My bad. Uh, uh, item uh, 62, MSBA Statement of Interest. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have uh, Bob Kuna, uh, the Director of Operations from the school here. This is an annual event for us where uh, the school department submits a project to uh, the MSBA for consideration for funding in the future. Um, I will say that there's a pretty lengthy um, motion in your backup, uh, so we could ask, I know typically maybe you can ask that that be added in or as written in the backup as opposed to reading it all, depending upon how you feel like uh, reading this evening. Well, we but, usually uh, let, don't we usually let the youngest member read all that? <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. That has been tradition. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> so I would suggest you hear from Mr. Kuna first, and then uh, we can move on to the motion part of it. Thank you. <clears throat> Great timing. I just saw you walk in that door. That was wonderful. I'll give you applause for that. Oh. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to be in front of you tonight. Um, as Mr. Sagarino just mentioned, uh, this has become a, a ritual, I would say. Uh, you've seen me at least the past 12 years um, asking for this. Um, this is not a guarantee and this is not a request for funding. What this allows us to do is actually submit the application to MSBA. Um, I don't want to give any odds. I'm not a betting person, uh, but we are in the pipeline right now. Absolutely crazier things happen, but typically MSBA um, won't usually have two projects going at the same time. Um, but like I said, I have seen crazier things, so I think it's a missed opportunity for us not to put an application in. Um, so again, I'm gonna have my fingers crossed with your support and school committee support uh, to put this statement of interest in for the high school. Thank you. Um, Michael, questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd love to thank you for the report. Um, I know we've applied, applied for the high school many times and has been denied many times. 
Are we doing anything different this time around since we are working closely with Fox Hill to kind of learn the process better and maybe make our application more attractive? Thank you to the chair. So um, we did make some changes to the statement of interest. We've also changed the terms. Um, before, um, before we, we um, were under consideration for accreditation, um, we are not under consideration for accreditation anymore, so we've actually removed that. Um, we've put a little more focus into the description uh, as to how the benefit that MSBA brings to the table could help us in the high school. And correct me if I'm wrong, isn't the number one metric for getting approved the uh, capacity? And I think one of our roadblocks has been that BHS is very large and. Uh, we have a lot of space in there, is that true? I can't confirm that it's true. I don't believe MSBA publicly will state that that is the reason, um, okay. but I, I know that that's strong in one of their decision-making topics. Okay, cool, yeah, I, I'm uh, glad to see we're trying again, and uh, I'd love to see a new high school, so I definitely support the effort. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Priest. Chairman. Uh, Bob, in conjunction with what Mike was saying, um, with you know, tossing up the wording or, you know, how you're choosing to apply this time versus the past couple, you know, uh, handful of years. Um, is there anything that we're doing with this application that involves or is being leveraged? Are we getting any learnings from the current subcommittee for the high school? And is that at all going to maybe, I know, you're not a big man and this is all yeah. hypotheticals. Could that possibly benefit us in this application with the MSBA? I believe so. So I think um, not only are we getting experience out of this, um, but involvement with the Fox Hill School Building Committee um, has definitely led us to, again, make some of the changes in, in the statement of interest. Um, I think every year it's a new field of teams, right? So we don't know what other towns are going to submit, and we don't know what funding is available for MSBA projects. Um, that being said, um, the need doesn't go away for the high school. So we're still focusing on uh, the downfalls that are currently in place, right? The building being older, the HVAC systems, the older outdated science departments, um, just the overall uh, um, age of the building. Um, so those are still our strong suits. We're just making sure that we try to capitalize on those and make sure that the wording um, looks better. Sure. Okay. And then, Bob, what are some of the higher criteria that MSBA does take into consideration when looking at these projects? Um, again, as Mr. Espeo mentioned, definitely um, enrollment is going to be one um, condition as well too so this year they actually brought back what's um, accelerated repair whereas for two years they did not have that so they usually have a core repair which means a large portion of the building not just a roof or not just a heating system we have always fallen outside of accelerated repair because of any of the trigger codes that would have happened right if we were to replace our hvac system it would require us to then put in um, some additional funds into the project to make sure we were in compliance. That being said, um, that takes whatever funding is available and actually makes it a little bit smaller. So it really depends on if they have 25 small projects or five big projects, depending on how big their pool of money is. Um, so I think the criteria changes year to year, sure. and obviously with the applicant pool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Bob, in all the years we've tried this, and haven't received the funding. When they notify us that we did not receive funding, do they give us an itemized list or a reason why we don't receive it? Nope. You say, no, you didn't get it. No, unfortunately, we get a, a very simple letter that says, thank you for your interest. Unfortunately, um, you were not selected this year. Kind of like college. I was just gonna say, it's like a plan of college. Right. They, don't, they don't tell you what your downfalls are. Um, a representative does not call us and say, if you had done this, um, if you needed a roof, it would have happened. Uh, we don't get that feedback. Um, maybe we can look at some of the other town projects that were selected, uh, and maybe we can compare, um, but there is no official statement from the MSBA. Yeah, because that was <coughs> follow up was to see if the other towns that are receiving this, what, what are they receiving it for that we're not putting in our request? So that, yeah. that was just a follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sir? My questions are all similar to everybody else's. We're seeing as we've submitted this so many times, it's been rejected so many times. I hope each time it's being looked at and tweaked and, and modified and things are added, photos, you know, engineering plans, things that show the deterioration. Um, so I'm not going to ask about that. I'm just assuming, is that happening? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, 
and in terms of ex looking at examples from other towns, are there other e examples of where a town has received funding for a school and then simultaneously submitted a request for another school within the town? And is, has that ever happened? Great question. I will say that in a different management system of the MS MSBA, um, let me rephrase that, not management system, management team of the MSBA, um, we were currently under two projects at the exact same time with the middle school and memorial. Um, so it is a possibility, but again, it does reflect on uh, what funding is available at the time and what other projects they deem are higher priorities. Just to be clear, I think the memorial was about finishing up um, as the middle school was starting at that time, so they weren't completely concurrent. And the middle school was more a renovation while memorial was a completely new school. Correct. Correct. And this would be considered two completely new schools, is that uh, Again, through the chair, so we're not, we're not sure yet. We um, have started the feasibility study, but we're early into that, so we have brought on an OPM, owner's project manager, we have brought on an architect firm, um, so we're really just having our vision and kickoff meetings, actually tomorrow, believe it or not, at the high school. Um, so we'll really start to dig deeper. Um, today on site, we did have some companies that are looking to over April vacation, start some of the uh, structural testing, um, scanning for blueprints, and um, boring in the property just to kind of see what the soil samples look like. Um, so we're really just starting to get underway. Hopefully in the next year to 18 months, we'll really have some concrete data as to whether or not addition, addition renovation, or new project is really the focus of where we should look at. So that doesn't matter when submitting the, uh, the application on whether you're requesting a new building or a renovation. They just, it's based on no, what from, the funds that they have on hand and are from, from MSBA's per, uh, perspective, and I'm sorry to um, jump in front of you, but uh, from MSBA's perspective, there's two programs, accelerated repair, and typically that would be if you need a roof, if you need a boiler. Um, that's kind of really the scope of it. It's not really if you need to overhaul a whole entire building. Then they also have a core program which is addition, addition renovation, or a new building. So we typically fall into that just because of the scope of the project. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. Okay. I already asked Michael, right? Mike? Yeah, he uh, you already got me. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is approval. I need a well, his motion. We have to no. put it into the. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. What? Well, There's a motion. Don't forget the yes. motion in the packet. You can reference it in the back of oh, the, the, the novella that we read every year. The, the novella okay. we read every year. Yes. Well, the long motion. Yeah, to read it, I suppose, or Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, like some people in town, I'm trying to become more educated uh, on the number of things that are going on in town, and I like history and. I'm not saying you didn't say this, sir, but uh, old buildings necessarily aren't bad. Um, I looked up our state house in Boston. I don't know the last time anybody was there, but I think it's a pretty outstanding building. It was completed in 1798, from what I could tell. So we're pretty proud of it. Uh, so I just wanted to share that. And one of the things I'm curious about, and I think you started to touch on it, I'm wondering how we can submit any application, whether it's accelerated, an addition, uh, a new, without a feasibility study. Uh, has that been totally completed? Can you explain to maybe the, the committee, myself, and anybody watching, or anybody that's gonna find out about this, uh, how you can submit an application without, it would seem like that would be facts that you need to make your case. Great. Through the chair, so great question. Um, I will tell you from my knowledge, the way that it happens is, is that because we have not been into accepted into MSBA's pipeline. We have chosen through town meeting um, to bring the feasibility study on ourselves. So we're doing that now so we can gather that information. If we were to get into MSBA's pipeline, then they would require us as the first segment of the project to do a feasibility study. So the feasibility study is reimbursable through the MSBA project. Mm -hmm. So by doing this out of order, um, we still are, are saving a step if we do get selected into MSBA's pipeline. Either way, we would be required to do it. Not required to do it. On our own, we wouldn't be required to do it, but we should do it so we can vet our own project. We will be required to do it um, if we are selected for the MSBA pipeline. Okay, thank you. Uh, since I'm 
trying to get educated, as I said. How many times have we submitted and it was been uh, denied? This is tw uh, number 13, so 12 have already been. Really? Mm -hmm. And how many were you involved in? This is number six for me. Number six, okay. Uh, and is it, can you submit two proposals, one for perhaps for some sort of repair, and, or it's one or the other? You are only allowed to have one submission per year, okay. um, and you have to select a priority. So there's an actual checkbox that says okay. this is our priority. So you cannot submit two projects. All right, well, I appreciate your time, and uh, I look forward to being educated uh, more, and hopefully more people in town uh, becoming more educated on this particular project. I appreciate the time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. That's one question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I did not catch your first name. Oh, Bob. Bob. Last name Young. Bob Young. Okay. We have that in common. We do. What nice about to Bob? That Thank movie, you. right? They made a movie about us. What about Bob? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Anybody else in the room or online? No. Okay. Now I need a motion with that nice article of newspaper in there. God, I'll read it. <laughs> you don't have to read it. <laughs> Just say with one. Mr. Chairman, says. I'd like to make a motion that having convened an open meeting on April 8, 2024, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the Select Board of Burlington in accordance with Charter Bylaws and accordance ordinances, uh, well, is, is seeking to uh, authorize Superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the Statement of Interest form dated April 2024 for the Burlington High School located at 123 Cambridge Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future for priority number five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems, and priority number seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the Burlington High, uh, School District to file an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Okay, did everybody get that or does he need to read it again? One more time for Francis. <laughs> Second. <laughs> I'm second that. Who should have second it? <clears throat> it's a roll call vote. Mr. Speo. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Nick. Aye. Jimmy. Aye. Jamin's aye. Five zero zero. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for being here, Bob. Great job. Okay, now. How you doing? <laughs> Citizens time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Peter Capola, Historical Commission. Uh, I'm here tonight to uh, just, just talk briefly about the commission itself. Uh, we are municipal employees of the town. We are an agency of the town created under uh, Section 40, uh, Chapter 40, Section 8, the Historical Commission for the Preservation, Protection, Development of Historical Architectural access, of, ac access Assets of the Town. Uh, and that was adopted in um, 1966, and then the town repeated that in 1966, um, and then again in 2005. Uh, we're an agent of and appointed by you for this town. But we have a responsibility to preserve historic assets, but we have no authority to do any of this. We're at, we're at the will of everybody in town. And the last few years, a lot of things have taken place that impacted zoning, land use, and now an historic building, and we have had no input and no participation at all in any of those activities. And it's, it's kind of frustrating for us as a commission to sit there and voice our concerns and have them overruled or have promises made and not kept. It's just very frustrating for us. And we don't know what to do. We're, we're you know, we're looking to you. You're the guys that have appointed us. Are you going to give us some support? Are you gonna give, show some support to us? Are we, do you want us to just go away? 
So we're here looking for, for input from the board. Well, as you know, citizen science, we sit and listen to everything, what the concerns are. We never comment on what's going on that night. So one of us will reach out to you um, during this week, probably, at some point. We'll sit down, we'll discuss what your concerns really are, and then we'll bring something back to the agenda so we can put it on the agenda, and then we'll discuss it further at that point. Does that, that, work? that, that's Does that fine. work for you? That's fine. Yeah, can I just have one request? When the Granby Farm was remodeled and finished, we had a, uh, a room that was supposed to be assigned to us. We have a desk in there. Uh, we have never received a key to get access to that room. Would it be possible for you to direct the administrator to give us a key? Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm trying. Wait, wait. So, do you think we can get him a key? <laughs> well, like I say, I, I'm, I'm unclear as to what that history was. Or what I don't either. Access to the room. I so. don't remember it, but um, we will. You know, this again. There's more t to the thought process. Just having but, you know volunteers in a yeah. in a public building uh, various times of night when the buildings aren't open, etc. Again, we're not volunteers. We're municipal employees. We're employees of the town. Right. Well, like I say. Um, but so, like I say, we, we can look into that, but I'm not sh I'm not clear as to why the reasons why they don't have a key. Okay, uh, so we'll we'll to... look into that. Thank you. Also, all right. All right. Yeah, if you can just sign your name on that for me, thank you. Uh, By the way, don't envy you at all. Twenty years on the planning board, I never once became chairman by choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. No, I'm only kidding. Um, the citizens' time. Anybody online or anybody else here for citizens' time? I don't see anything. No one else online? Okay. All right, let's move along. Uh, 64. I, I am a agreement with Lexington. Uh, Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, probably within a year or two ago, uh, the board uh, voted on an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Lexington, which sort of lays out uh, the responsibilities of both of our communities as we built a pipeline through their town uh, with our MWRA water project. Uh, this is a, an amendment uh, to that existing agreement. Um, it's already been approved by the Lexington Select Board. And what this part of the agreement outlines is um, we, the line is in now, and what we have to do is go back and pave the road this year. Um, Brian White, our Public Works Director, worked it out with the Lexington Public Works Director that the most efficient way to do this would be to provide Lexington with the funding to do the paving. Uh, they can manage the paving work to their own specifications. It will be their own contractor, et cetera. And we will provide the funding directly to Lexington. So um, that makes sense. I know from talking to Brian, he wouldn't want another town managing uh, pavement work in our town. He would want to manage it himself. So uh, this agreement's been uh, reviewed by town council. And again, it just sort of uh, puts in writing what we've verbally discussed uh, to provide Lexington with the funds uh, to pave uh, essentially Lowell Street. Um, and they would manage it, they would bid it, it would be their contractor, and they would uh, direct them from that point on. So it's an update. Uh, we need a board vote to approve it. If there's any questions, uh, please feel free. Uh, Brian's here uh, to answer any. We'll start with um, Mike. No questions. No questions, thank you. Sarah? No questions. No questions. Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I mean this with no disrespect to the people of Lexington. Uh, good luck. <laughs> he, and then he paused and thought about what he was going to say. In terms of overall repaving costs, regardless of who a municipality may go with, the range is probably within a fair range, and that, like, we're not going to see. Uh, you know, a specific, not not specific vendor, but you know, a higher cost vendor be chosen that's gonna, I mean, like, we, we know roughly what this is gonna cost, I guess is my question. Yep, they're, they're required to take the lowest bid too. Uh, I think there was some understanding of the specifications. I do believe that Brian had indicated to me the amount of, of funding he had uh, assumed for it, and I would just say that they, they did much better than that when they put it out to bid. So okay. we have the number, I came in lower than what we were anticipating. 
I guess not to say that there couldn't be some updates along the way um, if, if something were to go out of whack, but I think we're all in general uh, agreement that this is the best way to do it, and um, I think that we'll have enough documentation from their actual bidding of the project to use it as support to get comfortable uh, with the amount that we're handing over. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Jim. And Brian, I'm, I'm assuming that this has already been funded through the, the MWRA water that we've already allocated, and this is not yes. additional funding. All right. Yep. Just want to clarify. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Um, I have no questions for you, so this is an approval. I need a um, roll call. Uh, Michael. Well, you have to make a motion. Oh, motion. What? Motion to approve. Motion. motion, yeah, sorry. M motion, motion, to motion, 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 motion to approve, approve the, the IMA, IMA agreement, agreement with Lexington, as we have in our backup. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask you to add to authorize me to sign the agreement uh, on your behalf? And to authorize Paul Sagarino to sign the agreement on behalf of the board. Great. Second. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Mr. Spayo. Aye. Jimmy? Aye. Nick? Aye. 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 Sarah? Sarah? Aye. Aye. Board Chairman says yes. Five zero zero. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Okay, 65. Colonial Power Community Irrigation Plan Amendment. Amended. Paul? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have, we did have, uh, we have our consultants here on municipal aggregation. Uh, municipal aggregation is a program that we formerly had here in the town of Burlington. Um, it was discontinued prior to the, me uh, accepting this position, and when I took over, um, uh, I recommended to our, our staff that we refile an application so that we could provide uh, utility aggregation uh, moving forward into the future. It was a great program uh, while we had it. Uh, it did provide the residents significant savings. Uh, we have our consultants here from uh, Colonial uh, Power here to answer any questions. Uh, kind of what happened was before the pandemic, uh, the application was in and it got tied up in a bureaucratic snafu. Um, at the State uh, Department of Public Utilities. I guess that's a, a nice way of putting it. Very nice. Um, these folks have been working very hard on us for many years now with this application. And um, while this was going on, as the electric utilities really significantly raised the prices several years ago, we received many calls from members of the community wondering why the town didn't have an aggregation program. Uh, the Boston Globe actually wrote a story about um, how uh, many communities' applications had been um, held up at the state level uh, several years ago, and we're still working through that point today. Uh, what our SAMS memo um, details and what our folks can get into the details of, um, our consultants are suggestion, suggesting that we take this action so that our application can stay in the queue uh, where it is um, as we move forward and uh, we won't lose our place um, as they start to, uh, they're reviewing the regulations now and it'll allow us to um, have a more favorable program uh, for our residents once it's approved. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, so I guess I'll hand it over to these guys if you want to just give us a brief synopsis sort of of sort of landscape and, and what this vote will do for us this evening. Mark Capito, uh, Colonial Power, Five Mile Royal Ave, Marlboro, Mass. Good evening. So tonight, what's in front of you is the vote. So the Department of Public Utilities has finally got off the dime and said, we need these plans that have been held up to make a choice. And there's a, there's a choice in front of you that there's a, uh, the, the default plan would be that meets the RPS or the Renewable Portfolio Standard, exactly the same as um, Eversource. And then there might be one that has a little higher renewable, and then a second one that may even be a higher renewable than that. And the reason for this is, as the administrator just mentioned, uh, we're in this in-between. They have new um, guidelines coming out, and what they're trying to do is clear the queue. The, the brand new uh, chairman has asked that all the AGs uh, that's been, that have been waiting uh, move forward. This is the direction or the guidance that the department has given us, so we're just asking for a vote with 
I apologize. Uh, uh, the the uh, sustainability ha has made a, a, a oh, Sam. Sam has made a, a, a you know a recommendation. He thinks this would be best for the town, and that's all we need tonight to move forward. And I do expect that you would get an order within a few months, which seems slow, but in DPU land, it is like a New York minute. I think your plan has been held up for two plus years now, coming up on three. So. It, they, they are promising us, and many of the other ones have moved along. So it, it isn't just lip service. They have given us a path forward here. And I think just to be clear to the board, we're not approving the actual plan uh, this evening, and I think that did require a town meeting vote last time as well. So we have a significant way to go. Uh, but as Mark had mentioned, this, this action will allow us to keep our place in the queue and be closer to providing that aggregation program uh, in the future, and again, there's a, f there's a few more steps. There's a lot more input and discussion that we'll have need to have before we roll out a program. Correct. But this will this will keep us um, right in the queue to get our approval, hopefully in several months, and then we can sit down and uh, sort of understand uh, the market conditions of the ener energy markets, just to see if it's a if it's an opportune time uh, to sort of present um, a program here to to town meeting and the board uh, for the residents. It, it won't need to go back to town meeting, but it will require someone to, uh, to, to let Paul move forward with a contract. So we, nothing is going to happen other than you'll be allowed to move forward in the marketplace. You've already passed town meeting, you don't need to go back to it. Okay. Jim? No questions. Nick? Um, come back to me, please. Sarah? Can you talk about what kind of potential savings this could provide for our residents? So normally we see about eight or ten percent historically, uh, per you know per month. But I'm just here to tell you that um, as more and more load has moved off, and there's been a um, a shift in basic service procurement, the, the savings has been uh, quite a bit larger than that just recently. I expect there's going to be ups and downs in the marketplace. This, this peaky, uh, you're going to remember, is probably 25 cents a kilowatt hour two, two winters ago. It doesn't seem like that's out of the realm if, if things continue to hap happen geopolitically. We are uh, constrained natural gas-wise, so if there's something that happens in Europe, we need the LNG, and then we're competing for them for the LNG, and that's what's causing the big problem in ISO New England. So I do expect that those savings will be there. And the, the way you really need to look at this program is you're bringing a choice that doesn't exist in the marketplace today. So I, I just wanna say like that, that winter, say you had procured a price, making up something, 14 cents. People could have opted into the program if they weren't in it or they could have stayed there. And if at any point they wanna get out of the program, you're, you're by no means locking anyone in. The ultimate decision is the consumer at the end of the day. They can come and go as they please. The, the only hot button item is, it's an opt out municipal aggregation. Meaning at the beginning, anyone that's on basic service, unless they do something, will be enrolled in the program. Otherwise, they can come and go as they please. And, sorry, Mr. Chair, can I continue? And that's where I see potential pushback from the community is that they're automatically getting enrolled in this program that may be a little confusing. To, to me, it's a little confusing. Yep. I understand their savings, I, I, but I don't get it, <laughs> how it works. Um, so just in the, like, the simplest terms, it might be good to have, I, I don't know if there are neighboring communities that are already in this program where we can actually visualize what, how, the, how they have saved and we can say, okay, this community did this and this is what it did for them. So this is what we're, what we're opting into. There's about 175 communities that are up and running on municipal aggregation today out of the, out of the 350 and 50 of those. So out of the 300 that are eligible, 50 of them are munis, you know, almost two thirds of them are doing municipal aggregation at this time. And I'm, I'm happy to deliver uh, to the administrator kind of our savings figures for all of our communities. And do you, know, do you know of any communities who would choose not to do this? or ha who have chosen? Um, I don't know of any that have chosen not to do it. Um, I think some of it has to do with understanding the option is there, and then it might come to size. Okay. Some of the small communities out west may not know that this option exists. But I can tell you very few 
just trying to think in Eversource East, how many communities might still be there? Swindling. I mean, there aren't many left on basic service for Eversource. So I'm going to say to you, less than, less than 10 communities in Eversource East do not have a, a municipal aggregation or a choice for their residents. I would just suggest, Sarah, that uh, the opt-out part of it is the only part of it that I find distasteful as well. But unfortunately, uh, the opt-in uh, to put everybody in is the only thing that really works to get that critical mass of uh, consumers. So before we would commit to anything, we'll have bring these guys back in here uh, for plenty of public information sessions uh, okay. with the board to make sure everybody uh, has a full understanding of how it actually works and what we're actually doing. Um, you know, I would never uh, move that forward without everybody here um, being in full support of the program. Um, but I do agree that that is something that no matter how much savings we give somebody, if, if we put them in a different electrical program, there's going to be some people that uh, are upset about that. And I certainly, um, I understand it from a consumer, consumer side of things. So we will, um, prior to any uh, movement forward to this program, we'll bring these, bring these folks back in and we'll make sure everybody uh, is very well aware of how the program works and we'll get all the information out there to the public. It, j just so you know, everyone that's going to be moved would receive a letter from the town giving them the option to opt out ever, even before it started, 30 days, it's a statutory requirement. So it's not like it would happen without their knowledge now, not everyone's going to read the mail, we're aware of it, but everyone that was, was part of that group would get a mailing. Okay. I don't have questions. Mike? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you uh, very much for coming before us tonight with this information. I um, was very happy to see it on the agenda. And please don't take anything I'm about to say or my frustration towards yourself. Um, this is something that I've been uh, trying to work on since the whole time I've been on the select board. Our application has been tied up with uh, DPU. And I know they were incredibly backlogged. And every time I'd follow up with Representative Gordon, he'd say, it's DPU, Mike, I can't do anything about it. And I literally had like a sticky on my laptop follow up with Ken about, you know, municipal aggregation, like literally every three months. And I got the same broken record. So there is the cause of my frustration because a lot of the residents have been clamoring for an alternative um, to their energy bills with the high costs of raising, uh, high costs of, you know, their higher bills are coming out and everything. You said there's going to be an order within, uh, approved within two to three um, in a few months. Can you walk us through what exactly does that mean? Does that mean we have access to the program? Does that mean we move to the next step? I just, it's a very frustrating process. And I know it's not you and I know that you're working to try and get it done. I just want to get more clarification on how it actually moves forward from here. So at, at this point, all the town is waiting for is an order, and all the order is approval from the Department, Department of Public Utilities for you to move forward in the marketplace and test the marketplace for pricing. Meaning you could go out into the marketplace, see if you like pricing, and if you did, you could then start your program. At that point, that order is the end of the state program, and then it's back in the local. You could move as quickly or as slowly as you decide. It's completely up to the town at that point. We never need to go back to the department for any approvals or anything like that. At that point, you're finished the state and you're moving on. You can move as swiftly as the town wishes to move at that point. Gotcha, thank you. The follow up to that yes. is, and, and, and forgive my skepticism guys. here, yeah. um, we've been waiting two, three years. In a few months, has there, been, has there been a change in the DPU policies or are they now fully up to staff? What's the change on? The, the, the Commonwealth side. Yeah, that's a great question. For, I, I just want to know there's been a change with the new administration. They, in June of 2020, um, uh, June of 2023, in came a new DPU commissioner. He took a look at what was going on with municipal aggregation, took the whole thing and threw it in the trash can and said, this is, uh, this is wrong what we're doing. We're going to move in a new direction, which is those guidelines. Unfortunately for Burlington, you fall in between, meaning you've been waiting. So what they've been trying to do is clear the track. All of the people, there was about 30 different communities stuck in your, in your position. And what they've done is they've gone by um, kind of aggregator, if you will, moving along these. And fi finally they got to us and said, okay, these are the, we have eight communities like yourself that need to make this decision. Once the decision is made, they'll have the ability to then say, 
we're in agreement, you can move forward. And just, what, just from watching the last, I'm gonna say there's about six in front of you, those other six communities, once they've made the changes required, within a month or so, they did receive an order. So I'm, I'm tremendous, before I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in front of you saying what I'm saying, but what I'm seeing out of the new, uh, the, the new um, commissioner, it, it's, or the new chair, I should say, is it's action on MUNIAG, complete action. But great question, I do expect, you know, if we were to do this, sometime this summer you would have your order. Say we took this vote, we were able to move forward, say they got it in a, a couple of weeks, I would expect within six weeks you would have, what would that be, somewhere in the time frame of, of June, June, July time frame, you'd have an order for relief this right, winter. winter. All right, thank you very much. And yeah, that's, um, hopefully uh, you're right. Hopefully things move along and I'm going to make a new sticker for my laptop, new, new sticky for, for <laughs> July 8th to follow up. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll hit that one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, just really quick, I want to go over the fact that uh, this is just an approval tonight to, to move forward. This will come back to us with all the information that we do need on it. We do not have to go back to town meeting for this vote. This is something that's going to be decided here at this room um, and the public. Will, will that be a public uh, agenda that night or will that be just an approval? We can handle it however the board wants, so if you want to have a public hearing on it, like I say, um, show this many members of the community that will want to come out in favor of it. They've been calling me right. uh, for the past several years. Um, but it all absolutely has to come back to the board and uh, for further action. Okay. So my concern right now is to make sure it is coming back to the board for everything that we need to know as far as all these graphs and numbers and what's going to happen and all that kind of stuff. And then at that point, we can make a decision whether or not it's going to be a public hearing or it's going to be just an approval. Right. And I'd have to check the law. If a law, public hearing is required, right. obviously it would right. be a Absolutely. public hearing. But if it's not a public yeah. hearing, you can still do a public hearing okay. if you wish. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, um, gentlemen, ladies, any more questions? Just, oh. just one more. For okay. Me. My first question. Um, Mark, just a point of clarification. Um, when you said that the, the new TPU director, commissioner, whatever his title is. Chairman. Chairman. Uh, Threw out what's currently happening in lieu of what he feels is a stronger, I assume, I'm, I'm saying he, am I correct in assuming? It is a he, okay. that is correct. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't make assumptions. Um, Threw out the old, started new, is what we're, we have in front of us now and what we're going to be deciding on later in line with the new guidelines? Great question. So you're kind of a tweener in between, if you will. This is before they've uh, approved the guidelines that are here, this will get you into the marketplace sooner if you so wish. Just so you know, when the, when the guidelines come out, it already states in there that everyone will be grandfathered to the new guidelines. So this is just, he is literally trying to get something out before he gets these guidelines so that you're no longer waiting. Sure. Okay. So, but you will not, by moving now, won't hinder you in the future. You'll have all the flexibility of those guidelines once approved. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I'll need a uh, motion on this. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion uh, that we move to approve colonial power amended the community aggregation plan, uh, such that the basic Eversource equivalent plan be considered uh, the default and allow for two opt-in alternative green options. Motion by Nick, second by second. Mike. Second. Roll, roll call vote, thank you. Jim? Aye. Nick? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Mike? Aye. Chairs are yes. Yeah, aye. They're all set. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Appreciate your time. Hey, okay. now we're ready. Economic Developer Director, Melissa. Thank you. We'll see you later, Mike. You're going to a small screen. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's fine. Should I use another one? Here he goes. Go, does it go big if I do it like that? Forget on this one.
it'll just stay like that. Thank you for bearing with me on that. Um, for the record, my name is Melissa Tintoglis. I work as the Economic Development Director for the town. And this was an update. I had talked to the town administrator about um, providing an update for the board. Um, we generally try to kind of give some things kind of the ongoings of economic development, but I thought, you know, with some of the transition um, that I thought maybe it'd be good to just give a few background points of what the economic development office is doing um, because it is wide ranging and what we really try to do from the economic development um, perspective is, it just lost my slide, um, and take our general objectives um, and put them into policy actions and a work plan that we can move forward on. Um, so let me see if I can do this one more time. I wanted to share some pictures, give a little context of what's going on. Um, let's see. it's not allowed. To a soundboard. Make sure. <laughs> oh, I hate it on too much fun. It's not one of our options. Um, we need the theme song from Jeopardy right I now. I know, sorry. How would you like me to proceed? Because I can move forward without pictures, but it's not as cool. Can you send it to me? Can you send it to John? Yes. You guys want to take someone else as I load this up? I don't see them here. Pictures. I can't believe that. Okay. It just kind of canceled me. I don't know why. And it's not giving me a presenter option. Melissa, while well, you sit there and figure it out, would you like us to go to the next agenda item and then we can Yes, back maybe to you? that would be good. Can I do that, Paul? Sure. Gentlemen, how about that while she gets her computer all set up and ready to go? Fine, yeah. Okay with that? Okay. Uh, new license, uh, just salad 98 for all, from all road. Anybody here for that? Oh. Frank O'Brien. Nobody. Okay. Uh, is there any, there's not much of a backup on this? Well, so unfortunately you'll all have to decide how you want to move forward. We used to give you, they file everything online now. We don't have any copies. So that's why we inserted what we did, letting you know that they have submitted everything that is required of them. They have made their payment. They're waiting for your approval. Then Mark can sign off. Okay. They're looking to open on the 17th. So Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, go right ahead. So Lynn, if they're, if they're filing online, mm -hmm. how, are, how are we then notified? So in OpenGov, they have to create their own account let's say. So everything we have is it, they have to go under the select board office and then th there's different things that they can apply for. So for this, it's a general license. So everything starts with GL and then, you know, goes by year 23, 24, and then whatever number they were when they apply. So then they have certain things that, um, they have to, you know, submit to us a certificate of insurance and, you know, their workman's comp and the application itself, whatnot. Once we verify that that's all set, we give them a checkbox that then prompts them to pay. They pay. That prompts notification to us that they have, in fact, paid. Then we put it on for a meeting. Then tomorrow morning, if approved, we would go back and check. If not, for whatever reason, we would go back. We can notify them. We comment to them. They comment to us. Whatever the case, you know, issues, whatever are. As soon as that happens, the building department is notified that as far as we are concerned, everything is 
how it should be. They may be missing, you know, a fire certificate, a board of health, but sure. that, you know, doesn't affect us. Once all the boards, you know, have given them the same okay that we've given them, then their certificate is, is issued. I talked to Mark just because I was trying to figure out the best way to bring this forward. We, you know, everyone pushed us to go online and all of a sudden we're like, okay, now how do we give you guys what you need? Right. Seems silly to go into their account, print everything out just so you all can see it. But if that's how you want us to proceed forward, you know, we're happy to do that. And, and through the chair, I guess my, my question, the reason I ask is because I'm, is it as easy as printing out a one page application summary? Like, I don't know if they have, if that's available. That way we have like an overview. Like we don't need all the yeah, so dirty no, pages. No, everything it's it's uploaded individually. Individually. Yeah. So, you know, some accounts have, you know, nine attachments, some have five attachments, some have thirty two attachments, you know, when cars, you know, the right, different depending on what they're Yeah, registrations, licenses for each person. Right. The tips, you know, all, everything that you need. So it just depends on the account and what the item is. Sure. Okay. So we do have access to it. We can print them. We just thought this is why we had them go online. But right. again, it was this came up. We don't want to be ones to hold them up if everything's in order. Um, I did verify with Mark that they were finishing up, and they their perspective date of the 17th was looking good for them. Right. So I just didn't want to push it to the 22nd if we didn't need to. Okay. Any other comments on this? I have a question. Oops, go ahead, Jim. Good. Okay. Yeah. So just so I'm clear on the process, so they've checked all the boxes that they need to with us in terms of the license, but they still need to go through building and Board of Health, or they've already done that as well? Yes. Yeah, so unfortunately, they're not, we're connected through, we want building to know what our process is, and we, building, we're part of building's process, but they're two separate, so they have their, you know, general license with us under ours, but they also have, like, if you were to go into OpenGov, which you're all welcome to, you know, create an account just so that you can see. Um, you know, we can show you whatever, but so then they have that building one also. But we get keyed anytime they do anything through building, so then we need to give a final sign off for that as well. Okay, so we try to keep you know everyone being notified so that nobody's giving the okay before the other department has everything they need. Okay, so but you talk to market to building yeah. and everything's cool right there, and okay, yeah. So, for lack of better terms, they've checked all the boxes that we need. Yes, so, as far as we're concerned. And we don't need them here to approve them. We can approve them without. No. I mean, I did communicate with them this week. Kelly's been communicating with them. They did let me know that they would be here tonight. You know, I don't didn't hear from anyone today. But, you know, as far as on our end, they've done everything they need to. Right. So then, Mr. Chairman, if I may, no. I'd like to propose that we take some time at our next meeting or a subsequent meeting to discuss process with mm -hmm. Lynn and Paul. So that way we can decide when we need to see something and how we're gonna see it. Mm -hmm. Because for habitualist licenses, we probably don't need to see stuff as long as everything's been filed appropriately and you know you guys give the okay, but you know, for something else, right, we might say, you know what, it's probably good if we do see something and what does that look like? Uh, so I mean it's great that we can be online. It's just that like, you know, with us Coming here, we have to figure out how that process connects. So that's, I mean, that's someplace else. But mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's, again, it's great that we're online. I just want to make sure that we're we're having the right conversations. Mike, any comments on this? No, I'm I'm kind of perplexed uh, on what to do here. Um, to what the board board how the board feels as a majority. It's kind of a tough one. We don't we don't have the info. All right, um, Mr. Chairman, one, one follow up real quick. Yes, go ahead. Then maybe it's, I don't know if it's possible that we could visualize this uh, open gout to see what options, options and what might satisfy, like, a, oh, print that document that shows that it's, you know, just our, that would be good for our backup. So I'll pop in and you can show me what it, it looks like. Yeah, so we did, you know, talk briefly in the office, trying to figure out, so we can make, you know, a standard form we can bring to you guys at the next meeting or, you know, a meeting that says, like, for a general license, these are the documents that are required and we can have, you know, check boxes or, you know, class two, they have different requirements. So we can have one for each one of those. Yes. So it's not necessarily printing out what's there, but we can check each box so that you know that this is what's required and this is what's been submitted. Okay. 
Okay, everyone all set? My turn. So, I'm old school, I want them here. That's me. Uh, I'm sure this is a salad place, I guess. What are they doing? I, I don't, there's nothing here for us. I'm not blaming anybody, I'm not saying that we should have had this or that, that's not anybody's fault, but for me personally, I like when someone, something comes in like that and we get to talk to the gentleman or the people that are running it. Um, it's great that it's online. Technology is wonderful at sometimes, but in my mind, in my age, and where I live and how I work, I, I like to meet people. So that's my view on this. This will probably get approved tonight and go through because they've already jumped through all the hoops they had to jump through. But I think we need to change the policy on this a little bit where these people actually come in. Then we actually put the face to a, to a restaurant or to a sub shop or to whatever it's going to be. I don't really like this idea, to be honest with you. Just my opinion as chair. So. I think, too, Joe, to that point, I think if we if we discuss how we're gonna like what that process looks like, yep. then you know it can be hey like we're all gonna get open gov logons, and then Lynn sends us a link as a part of the backup, but then the person's still required to come in, right? So it, it, it can still be digital, and we can still like I I think in this case we can have it both ways, because I I agree I think especially for a new establishment, it's good to see you know who's managing or who's owning or who's involved and had that initial discussion, and I think it's always good for them, too, to give some face time, uh, you know, as a member of the community, you know, so I'm, I'm on board with that. I think it, it's just something we to take up in a different, a different meeting. Yeah, so um, I'll need a motion on this to move forward. Oh, sorry, Mike. You're so small yeah, there. Really really cool cool you guys. Guys. Uh, Someone's got to come to the meeting, even if it's remote. It's not that hard, you know, <laughs> present company, hello, to dial in remotely from anywhere. I mean... Someone's got to represent the, the, the business. I know they want to get open and going, but I mean, they can't just not show up. I don't know. Just my two cents. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, so there'll be nothing further. I need a motion on this to either deny it or to I'll pass just, it. I just feel as though, my, my opinion, that um, we do have to change the process, but I don't want to impact their business. So, that being said, I'll make a motion that we approve just salad 98 Bill and Tomorrow Road. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call vote. Mike? No. Barrett? Aye. Nick? Aye. Jimmy? Aye. And I'm, I'm an aye. Okay, uh, 401, 410. Sorry, my bad. Diplessius, I can't read or write. All right, now we're going back a little bit now <laughs> in time. So, now, Melissa, how are we doing over there? <laughs> Thank you. For the record. Uh, well, for the record, for Gary's the record. getting really upset because <laughs> you're keeping him from his thing here. <laughs> um, apologize. Um, I had liked to, um, I talked to the town administrator for, to provide an update to the board, um, just kind of the ongoings of where, you know, the economic development office is going um, and some of the activities. And I thought I'd take this opportunity just to remind the board a little bit of kind of what the work plan is and some of the policy actions that have been formed um, to fulfill some of our um, economic development objectives. So these are just kind of broad, but they fit into the bucket. And this is when I came about almost four years ago now, um, had stakeholder interviews um, with a variety of people, not just the board, but um, community members, town meeting members, and broke into buckets, essential these top objectives. And it's really promote and support our existing business, invest in the town center, and support the small businesses there create and enhance the ecosystem for innovation. In particular, we were looking at life science at the time um, and proactively plan for long-term growth. And that was really a, a lot of hand-wringing at the time prior to COVID. Um, it was more about the e-commerce and the retail landscape. And so that has since evolved. And as we know now, um, Planning for long-term growth also requires, you know, understanding how, you know, 
places are operating with um, hybrid workplaces, uh, the, you know, the downsizing in commercial offices, the right sizing of retail, and the glutton uh, life science. So there's a lot of other things kind of going on as we look forward. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so um, I don't know why it's not liking my connection here, um, but we were just about to go into some of these key economic metrics. And what I think what I could do is also provide handouts. So unless John can miraculously oh, yeah. connect to the next one. So yep, that one last one, which is just some metrics to give people some context. I know um, th there's a lot on this slide, but essentially we have data on the number of businesses in Burlington. That's over 2,000. Um, 2000. We have our total employees, you know, 57,000 jobs in the town. Um, and we have very low unemployment. We mirror a lot of what, um, you know, we are better than kind of the state and the national average in our unemployment. Um, we have obviously strong medium household income. Um, majority of our work is in uh, tech, finance, and healthcare. Um, we have the top employers here, and this is not in any particular order. These are kind of grouped on category numbers, but you know you can see healthcare. Um, Genesis is um, a human resource. Keurig, Oracle. Oracle's a good phenom because as though they have many people on record, they're not coming into the office as we know much anymore. Um, so that's kind of, you know, again, you have to kind of look a little beneath just the numbers that are reported to the state. Um, um, and our top taxpayers, this is excluding the utilities, but Oracle, Millipore, Burlington Mall, Keurig are some of our big top um, taxpayers. So those kind of give you a little bit of a, a context, and we'll go to the next slide. And why that's important, I just wanted to, you know, say that, you know, all this together, when we talk about our commercial environment, that kind of, if you add it all together, that has a value. That's the $3.4 billion if we added it all up. If we added all the value of all our houses together, it's actually much more. That's the $5.9 billion, right? And you guys go through this a lot when you're setting the tax rate. Um, I think as I think about it, um, what we're trying to do is keep these values moving upward and kind of strong. And we don't really, especially with regard to commercial, um, that is kind of the value we at best maintain or increase over time. And majority of the way you can do that, um, you can add value in a number of different ways um, with reinvestment. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, so that was just like an added touch that I wanted to say. Here is like the value of all these houses together, but yet we pay collectively fewer taxes, as this is what you guys know. This is the offset, right? We, as all our taxpayer money together, it's 50, 53 million. Whereas all our commercial property owners, even though they have a smaller share of this value, they pay 88 million. And that goes to offset all our whole town budget, right? So what we're trying to do with some of these policy actions is make sure that value, that 3.4 billion, doesn't drop off. If anything, it continues to grow. That's what you're trying to enhance either through new construction, and new investments, um, and that's kind of where um, it comes into you know this category of proactively planning for long-term growth, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. If we go to the next slide, um, just wanted to show this is kind of, I've shown this one in the past. What it is is really some of the, at least the chart you're looking at, um, are the office vacancies in Q1 for this year, 2024. And what you can see is some trending upward, and that's not surprising. We kind of know the vacancies going up. This is what we're reading about in the paper. It's a nationwide trend as we have remote work. Companies are, when their lease is up, they're getting smaller amount of space 
usually. They still want that third space for their employees to gather, but it tends to be the smaller square footage. And the other thing that's a pattern and trend, they're also paying a little more and going to nicer places with that money, that savings. So they're going to um, Class A office spaces. They are going to that live, work, vibrant, and you know, um, ecosystems. And that's what you know. Again, we're observing. We're not as, in terms of Burlington Commercial. We're not seeing any significant disinvestment that would be alarming. What we're trying to do is just be aware of the patterns and make sure we're making the interventions that we can as a community. So if we go to the next slide, I'll go into some of the lighter stuff we've done um, and then we'll talk about the bigger mall road rezoning initiative. But these interventions we've talked about are still important. This is the marketing and promotion. This is hanging our shingle out on the online web. And this is the Bring Me to Burlington page. Um, you know, as of Last year, we've had 35,000 sessions. That's not users. That's each time a person gets on and maybe comes back on. But that has been an increase, and that's 44% higher than it was the year before. So it does just show that some of our online stuff is working, and we're getting some traction to the website. Um, just so you know people, what are people looking for? It's really still restaurants and things to do in Burlington. That's kind of the most organic searches. Um, and then the things that we've been tracking kind of through um, more when we're promoting kind of online ads is the commercial space. People are still interested in office and commercial space um, and leases in Burlington. So I think that's interesting to really have that information. Um, it shows it's desirable, it shows it's still inter uh, of interest, and so that's where we've built out the website to have some of our office space online so people can kind of dabble in to see what else we have here. And we're still working on um, our partnerships. It's important to you know be connected. I don't have some of our state partnerships on there, but Middlesex 3, we've been a member, um, Mass Econ, and then the Greater Merrimack um, Visitor and uh, Convention Center. We've been part of that because we have actually over, even just in the core, we have a thousand hotel rooms. Um, and that generates not just a lot of um, hotel meals tax for us, but it also goes to the state and then it gets redistributed so for the different regions. And so we try to tap into that and kind of be um, kind of plugged in. Right now, the 250, Lexington and Concord, that's kind of a growing area um, of interest. And the state has put some money in that tourism bucket for them and when people come to stay for those things a lot of the time they're staying in Burlington so it's good to know that and we'll go to the next one um, this is the next one really talks about just the town center and the support supportive small business um, the beer garden series has been really successful for us um, it's also a really you know good example of a public-private partnership with a local property owner um, you know transforming those parking spaces making community like people space actually and then activating it with the beer garden has been pretty successful so far we had the 16 businesses and we've had um, you know over 2,000 attendees um, and we plan to continue that I think we're hearing some more interest on maybe a small business expo or something to kind of enhance this um, We've also heard that people are interested in moving this around, maybe in different parts of town center. Um, we have not made any determination on those things yet, but we are really kind of planning for the September fall return of this piece. Um, I think last time I was here, I told you a little bit about the storefront, uh, the vacant storefront improvement program. We signed up for that. That really just gives some credit for vacant um, for property owners looking for. Um, you know, new tenants, it gives them an added incentive. And still working with this uh, 3A roadway overhaul. Um, I'm giving you guys a lot of information. Are we okay right now with this? Yes? Okay. Um, I wanted to just touch base on these two things also for the town center, which is the 3A overhaul. That's, we've talked a lot about, about the resurfacing, and that is coming to fruition. But the other piece of it is for the town center. 
A lot of folks have said that they really want it to be you know, more walkable. They envision redevelopment of the commercial, potentially mixed use. But a key factor in that is an improved, safe roadway connection. And that is a multi-million dollar project that is difficult for any municipality to take on their own. So what we've done is submitted to the state under their transportation improvement program. And um, we did not get design funds. That was going to be an added bonus but we did make it on the project initiation um, list. So that moves us to the next level. So I think the plan at this point is to wait for the roadway, wait for the restriping, and then you know continue to keep this project on, it list, on this list so that we could likely see funding within maybe three to five years, hopefully, of this um, project. Some of the fun stuff is still the mural and the pop-up micro gallery we want to explore. Um, we got a little stymied with the mural in terms of getting um, the right kind of artist and property owner connection. Um, we're st it's not lost on us, so we're still working on that. And then I would say the pop-up micro gallery has been something that is still in kind of a concept um, phase, and we'll probably bring that back to the board here, but it's another way to do some placemaking. So thank you for advancing that slide. The next thing I want to just talk about is really the long-term growth. You've heard a lot about this rezoning initiative at different times, and I know many of you have been on the advisory board for this. And we can hit the next slide. This is really doing the... Um, yeah, that live work play piece is really trying to put that down in a policy form. So if we go to the next slide, um, you know, why are we doing this now? You know, I had said that we're in an okay place. We've noticed some patterns. Development and growth is important because it's it's incremental, right? You don't kind of realize it until you're 20 years out that you have a great place, or you don't. So what we're trying to do with this uh, rezone, mixed-use rezoning initiative is to create a great place. Um, and it's talked about in our master plan. Uh, we've spent over $500,000 on that master plan to get ideas. But the ideas do not mean anything unless they're in policy, in land use policy in particular, when it comes to developing and creating a built environment for your community. Um, and then, as you can see, uh, we could go into to this and have you know a great conversation about commercial values, how this also promotes sustainable development and environmental um, and climate change uh, you know goals for our community, and you know this is a legacy move as we think about this. As I talk about a little bit of you know I'll go into some more details of what action and the level of support the selectmen can kind of start thinking about. It's because again. I think there's concern, you know, if we do not move some policy and set the table now, that um, we will miss a lot of opportunity. And we don't want those trends and that value I talked about, that $3.4 billion of commercial value, to start dipping and becoming Class C, Class D, and lose the investment that it has. What we need to do is really kind of level up and understand that a live, work, play place requires some changes, and we're not always going to be that comfortable with it. But what we're trying to do is thread the needle because we're not just taking a developer's PDD, we're not just taking, you know, pie in the sky, you know, community. What we're trying to do is the Venn diagram that merges those two things together for market feasibility, and there's that sweet spot there that we're trying to create with this policy. So if we go to the next um, slide, um, you can pass through these. These are just reminding folks um, how important, and these are some of the elements and the recommendations that were in the master plan. So where we are now on the Mall Road uh, rezoning initiative is that we've gone from that concept plan, which we identified about 100 acres, we've gotten community um, input, we've done charrettes in terms of design, um, and we've done a, a vision plan, and now we have the actual zoning. So if we go to the next slide, the actual zoning um, starts to look like this. It is the Everything that's pink is in the mixed-use district. Some of the policy considerations, 
Right now, this is all commercial. It's about 8 million square feet of commercial. Very little residential except for the senior living. We want to keep that commercial dominance. We want to keep the value and we want to keep the square footage, if not augmented. Um, so that is a policy embedded in this. Um, we want to increase the open space. So when we're talking about those surface parking lots, if we're talking about denser buildings and we're trying to open things up, we're also not just opening it up for development, it's opened up for open space and creating new public amenity space. So that's very important in this. Um, as well as the public realm investment, oftentimes that's kind of neglected or overlooked in the connections between parcels have been overlooked. So in this policy, we have specific standards for that. The housing would be allowed in this area. So um, at this point, um, you, the negotiation would have to provide more publicly accessible open space, but the idea is that you could go up to 30 units per acre in certain areas. And it's not marked on this, but it would be around the mall and more about wayside. Those are the two nodes. Um, and that's, you know, the development when we're talking about density and doing open space. Um, I want to be very transparent. The, you know, this is four to six stories on average. Um, it's about the height that's allowed in the innovation district um, with a retail on the front floor. So all of this together over time again um, is intended to create kind of the sense of place that, you know, the next generation um, will really want to, I, I really believe will want to live. It's about walking and connecting uses closer together, but also really, you know, not forgetting what makes something important here. And part of that, that green line too also starts to um, address a little something, but it's to reveal that, you know, this Vine Brook once went through here. There's been talk about the river walk at different points, but now when we have a plan and we show what our public amenities want to be in this area, we can show developers as well. So that is kind of part of it. Um, and we'll go to the next slide. Let's see if I have anything else here I'm forgetting now. So yeah, so the, the, the not so fun part on this is that it comes in like a big document and town meeting has to approve it. And we've been working with, um, we've gone to the land use committee, we've gone to uh, the planning board, we've held, I started to hold precinct meetings um, to start talking about what the document looks like, what is in it, and what it means. Um, and I think that's kind of, I think might be the only thing I have on here. John, I don't know the last one. Thank you, questions. So that's a lot of information, but I wanted to try to give um, a little bit more detail on that, you know, the zoning initiative. And also, you know, maybe seek, to have a subcommittee that could work with us to really look at that because from planning board, we know that not everyone can kind of get to everything and read everything, so they've selected two people to really dive into it. It'll be Jess and Barbara with Brenda being an alternate, um, so that was one thing that maybe, you know, Chair, I don't know if you want to consider something like that for us here, but um, that's kind of what the state of economic development for Burlington is right now. I don't know if you have questions. Okay, uh, let's start with Mike. Segment, Chairman, and uh, thank you, Melissa, for the update that was provided. Can you send uh, me a copy of the slide deck so I can review it and go back through? Yes, There's yes. a lot there. Um, also interested, just a, a, an interesting comment, to see total wine on our top five uh, Taxpayers, that was interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, yes, yeah, so I have to go stuff. back on that one. Sometimes they have um, the limited liability corporation listed differently, so I could go back on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, just a question, something that you didn't touch on. Do you still have, are you still looking to fill a position in your department? What's up with that? We want to make sure you have all the resources you need to do all the great work you're doing. We get an update on that. Um, yeah, so we are looking, we got several um, applications. Some folks were not, I think 
Part of it was a little challenging because we were looking for graphics and social media and it doesn't fit um, in a typical kind of nine to five office setting. They look for a lot more flexibility and remote work. So that was a little harder. So we're re, um, restructuring kind of, not restructuring, but rethinking maybe the, the requirements on the job description. So we're getting closer if that's helpful. Okay, and uh, Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to be on that subcommittee if you need someone um, to help Melissa out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You, you kind of answered the only question I really had was the timeline on the mixed uh, zone, mixed use zoning. So it looks like September town meeting. So at this point, um, that that's what we're targeting. I think some folks have, um, at least at the last precinct meeting, talked about maybe it being a special town meeting. Um, and I haven't really had a good conversation with the town administrator on that, so I might need to do that and get back. My only suggestion would be to have like one of those open houses prior to either that this town meeting or the special town meeting just to uh, better educate the town meeting members who, you know, before they vote. That's all. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Mr. <clears throat> Chairman. Uh, Melissa, I think the only question I probably have at this point is um, I'd be curious to know of those top employers you had listed, how many of them are currently or moving to a hybrid or remote work model. I know that Nuance does. I know that Oracle does, right? And I think to your earlier point, it's great that they're, you know, the top employers in the community. Their people aren't here, though. Right. Right? It affects the engine that we've created. Right. Right. Um, and we talked about this a little bit at our last meeting with Liz, talking about the MBTA routes, right? right? And how many folks are kind of, you know, coming into Burlington versus working remotely here mm -hmm. versus leaving, right? And I think that um, what I like about this rezoning plan is that it provides an opportunity to create a proactive balance in that mix, right? And not just kind of be stuck with the model of people coming to places to work, right? Because now that we are four going on five years out from the pandemic, mm -hmm. I'm putting massive air quotes, um, you know, we're seeing the businesses evolve their models and stick with something, mm -hmm. right? And I think that much like anything else, we're gonna see a mixture of that choice. And I think that we need to practically evolve with it, right? 16% mm -hmm. is high in terms of vacancy rating, but of course, we're not, you know, sounding alarm bells. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, much like we were proactive in figuring your rollout, you know, five and a half years ago, I think now's our opportunity to think through what this next evolution of at least this area of the community looks like, right? Like I think in one presentation you talked about trying to create the uh, that downtown small community feel in one area of town. Right, while trying to figure out a way to proactively evolve another area of town that we have historically created as a, a commercial business engine, um, you know, and I think that that is absolutely a way to, you know, kind of keep things moving forward. Um, you know, along with Mike, I know Mike and I have been serving on, you know, the the economic development committee thus far. I would happily be a part of whatever subcommittee that you're putting together, um, you know, because I think that how we bring this to town meeting, that discussion and then moving forward with whatever it is, is gonna be pivotal. Um, I did, another question popped in my head. I, I appreciate you talking about the Bring Me to Burlington metrics. If you don't have it now, it's fine, but I'd be curious to know of the traffic that's driving to the site, how much of it is coming from social and how much of it is coming from people who already know the site exists. Because I'd just be curious to see what's driving new traffic, if social's helping in that, and how we can help people who might not be aware mm -hmm the site exists, become aware of it, right? Because if you've got somebody who's trying to relocate a business that isn't close to Burlington or isn't considering Burlington, how are they finding out about us? That's, what, that's probably all for now. I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep it relatively short. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Is that the Reader's Digest version? That was my Reader's Digest version. Thank you. <laughs> Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Melissa, for that presentation. So I was in on one of the well, the one precinct tent yeah. meeting session that you've had so far. So I got to see a little bit more in detail, the Mall Road revisioning, um, and it was a lot. And I think what we got out of that is that it's going to be a big education 
point for town meeting and for the town as a whole because the scope is very large. Um, it's you know rezoning. It's not an overlay. It's truly rezoning a huge area of town mm -hmm. to be mixed use, you know, combo, residential, commercial. And that might, you know, put, put some people off. And mm -hmm. um, working on that education piece is going to be really important. And starting with town meeting early and often and simplifying the message as best as we can. Um, because I think, you know, in the past, and this came up at the town meeting uh, precinct, session that you had mm -hmm. we had that zoning overlay for the town center mm -hmm. didn't quite pan out how everyone right. you know envisioned so it might not be you know the first thing that people want to do is rezone an entire part of town but um i think that's just something that we have to work through because i think it's a, a great idea and it's how we move into the future of how things are how our, our town is moving forward and how other towns are moving forward. And if we don't do something like this, we are losing those opportunities that other towns are jumping on. So um, I I know Mike and Nick already volunteered, but I would also be interested in being on the subcommittee. But I know I'm a newbie, so um, you know I defer to the chair on that. Um, but yeah, thank you. I don't have anything else to add, but appreciate all your efforts, Melissa. Thanks. <laughs> everything's been everything's been talked about. Everything's been said. We definitely have to move on with this. Uh, we talked a little bit today about um, small business and stuff like that. So we're going to work on that next. That's, I think that's a, a key factor in, involved in everything. But I think the more town meeting knows about it, the better off we are in the big picture. As always, the more information they have, uh, the easier it is to pass uh, or fail but most of the time it passes because they have all the information they need. So I'll just go with that. Mr. Administrator, any comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, I'd just like to credit Melissa for all the outreach she's done to date. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of town initiatives, um, there's a lot of people put, who participate, but they're the same people that always participate, and we keep continue to sort of miss sort of the broad swath of town meeting members and residents uh, with some of this work. Um, the attempts are there. Um, I agree with all the board members' comments. Um, it is big. It is scary. Um, it would be transformative over a long period of time. Uh, we do have a model of something very similar the town did in 2007, 2008 with the Northwest Park. Uh, PDD, there was the same concerns at, at, at that time from town meeting. Um, I think we would all agree that, that that PDD has sort of turned into exactly what we had hoped it would in terms of being uh, creating the kind of environment that we want here in town. Um, and again, I think from talking to the Nordblum folks that despite being so many years ago, I think that place is only about 50 percent, you know, 15 or 18 years later is about 50 percent. Uh, built out from what they had planned in their PDD. So uh, I do think we need to stress that, um, you know, all this development or redevelopment is not going to take place um, the day after town meeting votes something in. There's certainly probably some sites that are prime and ready to go to, to kickstart their properties, but, you know, the majority of this is going to build out over 30 years or longer, um, you know, if we put the right conditions in place. and. You know, if everybody just sort of understands how the finances here work, I think she, Melissa demonstrated it with a couple of the charts there, but um, we really need, um, as, as everybody knows, the unique financial situation we have here where we're able to keep very resi lower residential taxes uh, paid for by the businesses. It's very fragile, and um, we've, we've faced more threats than ever over the past few years with the change in the office environment, with COVID. And I think it's imperative uh, as we move forward, um, you know, given some of the infrastructure needs of the town as we move forward, um, I think we're really going to want to create these kind of conditions in our building, uh, in our business district, um, to keep it vibrant and to keep it one of the top places in the suburbs for companies to be. Um, I have confidence in town meeting. It is, again, it's big, it's scary, it's going to require a lot of uh, explanation. Um, and we're, we're, we're really counting on the support of the board to help us sort of bring it to the finish line uh, in September. So uh, that's, those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. Let me just say this. Um, 
to go back a little bit, th th this this particular board and the other boards that I've sat on in the past, we've always looked at things in a in a three to five year term. You know, what what can we do for the next couple of terms as as a select board member at this point? So, police station, fire station, uh, DPW bond. This is different. This includes the business community to reevaluate and re redo the business community so that they can prosper in the long picture, which is only going to turn around and make the town prosper. Right, so we get these big things going. We get this town meeting thing to happen. This is a this is what you said a thirty year plan. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be here in that time frame. But you know what? Me? I w you're not going to be here. Uh -huh. uh, I love you, but probably not. Uh, but in thirty <laughs> years from now, um, you know what? You might be. <laughs> so anyway, but what I was trying to get at was the fact that we're here to do what's best for the town for the future of this town. Right. I'm not going to be sitting on this board in 30 years. I know I'm not. That, that, that's a fact. But our job is to look at the future of the kids that are coming up, how we're going to supplement all their stuff that they're going to need. And the way we do it is to just keep giving and giving and giving. This town, there aren't too many amenities that this town doesn't have that we need already. So to make that future last, that's what we sit here for. We sit here to do that. So thank you for all your work you did on this, and I just hope that everyone understands that this is a big project. This is a very, very big project, and it's for the future. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. follow-up. Yeah. Oh, sorry, good. Uh, I'll follow up after you. Okay. I, I, I just did have a couple just comments in terms of um, selecting a priest. I will look at the social, although I do know for a fact these are some of the questions that just came up. You mentioned social where traffic coming on the website. Um, that actually, a lot of the commercial interest is coming from postings that we do on LinkedIn, so we want to target that more. Um, I think with regard to the scope of um, the rezoning initiative, um, with creating the type of zoning that we're providing here with a lot more instructions for developers to see what they want to see. Even if the area is small, it will still require a lot of changes in the bylaw. So whether it's a small area or a large area, it's going to be a lot of changes and amendments that town meeting would still have to approve. So whether it's large or small, it's the same technical amendments um, to keep that in mind. And the reason it's larger um, is because development pressure is is strong still. I and mean, we're not having it currently, but the thing um, that we will observe if it's not a coordinated strategic plan, you will have you will have the continued helter skelter ad hoc development that doesn't connect anything and does not get you any of the public benefit from the public open space part because you'll be negotiating one on one again with each developer on each project. This plan lays out a vision for how this turns into a village over time. And that's why it's a little harder to kind of accept, but like Amy Warfield had talked a lot of to some of the town meeting members, she's like, it's much like the work we did 60 years ago for Burlington. We laid large swaths of the land dedicated to commercial, and at that time it was the type of commercial development we're seeing, you know, that has come to fruition. Now what we need to do is revisit that kind of action for the next generation. So um, and there's that, and I just feel like, uh, you know, in terms of any advice, simplifying the message and communication, I welcome that. Um, I'm happy to continue meeting and, you know, we had thought of maybe a video um, or something like that. So if there are other ideas to help synthesize the information and give it to people, we have an online document now that people can comment on, um, but I have to get that out more so to people. So those are a couple um, comments I wanted to just share back. Mr. Jimmy? Yes, sir. <clears throat> It's this type of forward thinking that gets us to where we are. When we rezoned, it took years in the process, rezoned the uh, New England Executive Park into now what's the district. We hit a home run because we changed it to mixed use. When we rezoned over third Ave, fourth Ave, now look at it, we got another home run. If we're able to pull this off and rezone the Mall Road, we're gonna have Grand Slam because it's such a big area. It's so much bigger than District or 3rd Ave.
but this is the kind of forward thing that residents have to realize is it takes day one, but it takes time. We did that with the district and look at it. Mm -hmm. We did this with third Ave, now look at it. So now this is our third at bat, so, so to speak. But. Um. Yeah, they have, those have been models for what we're looking at. I think the challenge we have um, is that it's not just one developer, and so we've been coordinating it from, you know, Simons Mall, Macy's, Hines, Lord and Taylor, Bricksmore, R.J. Kelly, um, National Development, Piedmont, Edens, and we have brought all of them to the table on this. So, um, you know, I think one thing, you know, in retrospect with uh, the town center overlay, you know, an overlay allows you to opt out and um, not all the property owners were involved to say what is it going to take to make you you know kind of reinvest in your in your property and um, with this initiative we've come from the community side about the open space we really understand that and then we're working with the property owners directly saying what is it going to take and that's that sweet spot we've been trying to you know find with this also yes so that was just an update. There's no approvals, no anything else. Anything else? Thank you. Anybody? Nothing? Awesome. Okay, we're good. Thanks, Vanessa. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Melissa, well, so thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Moving right along. Bob and budgets and approvals. Mr. Sagarino. Mr. Denizio. That's across the room. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I love going after Melissa because then stuff seems so much easier to absorb than her <laughs> materially. So tonight we have to approve two more uh, departments in the operating budget and 10 or so accommodated accounts. I also have uh, Mr. Giannino here to help with them, but uh, as we wait for Gary to walk up, we'll start in section 149 of your books is what's called central administration, and that's where the bulk of these accounts are. You'll see in that section of your book that there's a, mem a memo that was included and a summary document from me that was also emailed out that has a brief description of each of the departments. So we'll go in the order of that summary document, if you don't mind. And we'll start in the operating budget with uh, central administration. We, uh, it's, it's basically two accounts in one, called central supply and central machine. And what is that? That's the catch-all for where we buy the supplies, the general office supplies, and the bulk of it is paper uh, for each of the departments. And it's where we also pay for the copy machines. Uh, the leases for the copy machines, the payment for the copy machines, the support and um, supplies for the copy machines. And the budget request for next year is, is $169,000, which is a significant percent over the previous budget, uh, it's well over guidelines. Uh, but if you were to actually look at the history of this, I wish uh, Mrs. Madigan was still here. I wish she could attest that this hasn't increased probably since she began working here uh, a million years ago. So uh, we just, we still have, you know, we have to buy more supplies and the stuff just costs more. So, um, like I said. You wouldn't be so bold in saying that if she was still here. You're right, I would not. <laughs> the percent increase that is a, is, does pop out, but, um, like I said, if you were to do it over the amount of years, it's probably more like a 1% increase rather than a 20% increase. So I don't know, uh, absent a chair, I don't know if that means I get to pick if we're going to keep going through them or if we're going to vote them one by one. Mr. Espejo. Oh, uh, Mr. Espejo. Great. Well, uh, Can I ask a question first? Why didn't it increase if it, it, each year over 15 years? Uh, I think there's lots of accounts you may want to ask that. Okay. I'm you, know, but it's, um, you know, it's one of those things we just do less with more and... Um, it was, it's the last one in the total pool that, that... I know. It's not a big... You know, when we're trying to make it to the guideline and, and um, you know... It's easy to cut back on a copy paper. Yeah. It's supposed to, yeah, you know... Yeah, it's, it's a small amount. things, I guess. So, Mr. Vice Chair, would you like to vote on them as we go, or would you like me to go through them through all? Through them all. Um, just go through them all, I think. Anyone has any objection? Nope. Thank you. So the next one um, is why is why we brought uh, Mr. Gino Giannino here to earn his money. 
This is Chapter 32 employee benefits, the bulk of that of which is the health insurance for our thousand or so employees throughout the town and schools. Um, you can see that the increase is just under a million dollars to a to a very large number of 17 million 100 thousand ish. Um, in your packets, in that one, section 141, uh, 149, and also in the email from last week, there's a spreadsheet that outlines the costs and has the participation um, for each plan on it. And I'm going to stop now and, and uh, see if Gary wants to add anything. And of course, just want to take questions. Uh, I think John's uh, done a good job in summarizing it. Uh, the budget has, uh, for the last uh, few years or since I've been here, we've been working down, as we're self-insured, we've been working down some of our trust uh, balance as requested by town meeting. It made sense to do that. Uh, we're starting, this, this particular budget is starting to feel some of the effects of the increase in uh, medical costs and uh, uh, just charges um, among the policies. So there's a uh, four and a half percent increase uh, for the for the employees uh, with these policies, and a uh, little higher than the budget's a little higher than as John and I and Paul discussed. But it's, I think it's a workable budget, and uh, we request the approval. And the town works closely with the employee group, uh, the insurance advisory group, uh, which does a lot of work and the town's consultant who really looks at the details of what our costs are. And with COVID, it was a little bit hard to figure out what our uh, run rate was going to be because of a few factors, the federal government picking up a lot of COVID costs, uh, people putting off medical appointments for some time during COVID until after. Um, but we seem to have normalized, and we feel pretty good, and our consultant feels pretty good that our estimates for the following year uh, are accurate. So if no more questions on employee benefits, I'll, I'll hop to, uh, to the next one, which is our transfer for, to OPEB. This is something we do annually. It's been around for you know, almost a dozen years, I guess, or nine years. And it's in the operating budget. The schedule is also in the backup. That's the funding schedule for the next 30-something years to when we would expect um, for our OPEB liability to be fully funded. It's important to note that we are not required to fund this. We're not required to have a trust for this um, as yet. It's just required that we identify what the liability is. It's just required for us to do an actuarial and put it in our financial statements on what that is. Uh, we do expect that we will, at some point, be required to fund it, and we've done a nice job to get ahead of that. Um, we've got some million dollars in there? What did you say? I'm in, I'm in. Oh, oh. We, our present balance as of uh, April 1 is $17 million. And I, I think it goes without saying the fact that the town con continues to make contributions to this helps with our bond rating. Uh, they were always asking about this, and it's been a continuous uh, program that I think is in the ninth or 11th year. Um, and uh, it, it does help in the planning process. So. so our plan calls for the appropriation each year to grow by 9.3%, which we've been able to handle now. Uh, as you can see, it's up over a million dollars annually. And if you look at the report uh, out a few years, those numbers start to get a little bit more scary. And will we be, keep, be able to keep up the 9.3% then? Uh, I guess we'll see. But one of the things that's also on the horizon, several factors that we we consider in order to help cover this liability. Um, one of the big things is that at some point our pension system will be fully funded. It's required to be fully funded by 2037. And at that time when it's fully funded, we'll only be paying our normal cost instead of the catch-up cost, which we'll get into when we get to that budget. But that would, that would free up a significant amount of money that could then be directed to this if, if in fact we were required to fund this measure. Another thing we do is we, uh, what they like to call super fund it, where we, each year we put a, a warrant article uh, placeholder on the Maytown meeting warrant uh, about adding an additional amount from free cash or any other source to fund beyond what our plan says. And then you get the benefit of that 
additional money compounding and it changes our future payments. It's something uh, that Mr. Giannino and I like to fight about for about five months. So it's, it's a very time consuming. And uh, th that, that is on the warrant uh, for this year again. If the placeholder is on the warrant. We'll be talking about warrant articles at our next meeting, our next two meetings. And by, by then we will have our had our meeting with Town Hall 1 to see what Ways and Means uh, recommendation is for that also. I think given the uncertainty of the next two building projects that we'll be approving at the next two town meetings, uh, the administration's recommendation would be to not use any additional free cash and let's wait and see uh, how we make out with those. If no questions on OPEB, I'll move on to unemployment. So unemployment for the town, um, this is for town and school employees. It's funded, level funded from last year. The budget has been $100,000 for quite some time. We are um, self-funded for this, so we pay all of the costs rather than paying a, a premium. It's uh, been more beneficial. It's proven to be more beneficial to the town. Um, we have uh, average costs over the last five years were about fifty-seven thousand. In ten years, it's maybe it's sixty-seven thousand. Um, so you may ask, why do we fund a hundred? It's very hard to predict who's going to leave their job, how many how many changes we're going to have, and we're not asking to increase, so uh, you know if it doesn't get spent, it gets turned back. Um, so it's one of those, it's one of those budgets that's just too volatile. Uh, the next one is town insurance. You'll see a, a three-page memo in there on that in that same section uh, from from Sam Hockenberry. Uh, the increase seems a little high, um, percent-wise, but dollar-wise, it's not that much. This funds the uh, property and liability insurance um, and also the uh, workers' comp. So again, workers' comp is very difficult to predict. You don't know who's going to uh, have an injury or when. Um, and again, this is for the town and the school. Financial services is, is includes the bulk of it is the audit that the town is required to have several audits performed, one being the annual audit, which you uh, have all seen that big, thick, comprehensive report we get that uh, Julie and her folks get an award for each year. Um, that's, that's the bulk of what this funding is. And we're asking for an increase for the first time. Uh, well, since COVID, we reduced the amount. It was, um, it was this amount before, and we rolled it back when COVID hit because we, it funds both the annual budget and then a few thousand dollars for us to do any sort of financial review of any department or operation that we thought uh, needed it. We would have a little bit of funds to do that. Um, so those are the two things that are, are funded in, in, in that line. And again, this is the first increase since COVID. Um, and um, we just renewed with our CPA firm that performs our audit for another three years, five, three years now. Yeah. Um, so that's locked in and that's good news. The next one is, is Medicare. This is easy enough. This is a one hour requirement to fund 1.45% of all the salaries we pay out. Uh, the increase is about 5%. Again, we use that, we just judge by how much our total salaries would go up over the year, and that's what we project out. Um, the uh, town is required to match the 1.45 that all of our employees pay. I think you all know about that. Um, that's it for uh, the ones that are in section 149. The next one is, is debt service, but just for FY25, that's in the front of your book. It's the first page in your book. It was also shared in that email uh, from last week. You can, what's listed in the email is a couple of sections, the top section being just what our current debt is. Um, so a listing of all our ex, uh, existing debt, what the principal and interest uh, payments are for each project, and then what that, what that total is, and then below that it'll have for FY25, do we expect to have any payments for projected projects or ongoing uh, uh, band payments or things like that? So you'll you can see below what the costs are for those. Those are things we have 
not yet permanently borrowed for. Um, so that's why they're uh, considered proposed projects. And down the bottom, you'll see what the total is, and it's about a 7% increase. A couple years ago, we had a budget summit, and we talked about our percentage increase was more like a 4 or 5% every year. So it wasn't that huge, that big of a hit to our accommodated budgets. But going forward with these projects coming up, that we, we'd expect uh, to see more significant uh, increases. So again, this is only the debt service for FY25. The next few items are uh, in other accounts, and those are in the very back of your book, and they were also in the email that I sent out. The first one being the Middlesex Retirement System. What's included in the backup is a copy of just uh, of their actuarial study, just the page for Burlington. Uh, the study is you know, hundreds of pages um, that I'm sure Gary could, could recite from memory, but for the for the Burlington page, it is included for backup. And what it is, just like we do for OPEP, they have to do an actuarial uh, study every couple of years, and then we get our next two years assessment from that page. We know how much we're going to pay. The one um, wiggle room on this one is we are able to, uh, to pay either multiple payments or one payment. If we pay in one payment, we get a discount. Um, I can let Mr. Chinino uh, talk about that, the, the, the review about uh, whether the discount is worth it. The, uh, John's correct. We have the opportunity to make a payment on full July 1st, the one half the payment in July 1st, the other half in December. Uh, I've looked at the analysis each year to uh, make sure that it's worth paying up front, and it has been by a, a good one, one and a half, two percent. So uh, I'd much rather uh, pay up front and get that used a discount. So it's worked out. And as he said, every two years, the uh, actuarial is done. The last valuation was January 1, 2022. So we are up, up for another uh, valuation of the year. Uh, we've probably paid, uh, reallocated some funds. It's, it's probably increased a little over a million dollars a year this year. As, as John has indicated, it's 14 million two ninety one nine sixty six. And it's a uh, continuing pro continuing uh, unfunded liability. This they're estimating will be paid off by 2036. The next account <coughs> in that same group in the back of your book is local transportation. This is what used to be the B line and then turned into the at what the time was called our pilot lift rideshare program. Uh, I think we dropped the name pilot because it's been going on for uh, four years now. And as you remember, and every time we talk about it, it started during COVID. So we weren't sure how it was going to go. It has gotten more and more popular, and the numbers um, have grown quite a bit. And we are project we're uh, estimating to, we're budgeting to supplement that by $100,000. That wouldn't cover the whole cost of the program, but there's still money left in that revolving account um, that we want to use uh, to help support this while we figure out what the right size of this budget is. Um, you know, I think we're at 1,100 users a month or something like that. Is that going to be where we plateau or are we going to continue to grow? Additionally, there's some funds that at January town meeting, you may remember that we transfer from our, ten, uh, our share of the additional uh, fee on rideshare programs that is split in, split between the destination and uh, pick the pickup and drop off uh, uh, places. That is about twenty five thousand dollars. Now we that at before COVID was in the thirties. We expect that to grow. So at some point we'll have those funds and what becomes what's our operating uh, what's in our accommodated line from our operating budget that we supplement. The uh, next one is capital improvements, has a funny name to it. This is basically our technology infrastructure lease. So it's for $100,000, or it's $500,000, no, it's $400,000 and a half um, for, for uh, the five years of the loan. This was what is commonly referred to as our technology lease. About, this will be the last year of our lease payment. We um, leased 
$2 million five years ago, uh, and we did over all of our technology infrastructure uh, for throughout the schools and town departments, and that lasts about five years. We're going into next year. We'll be looking to refresh that and do something again. This last time we added in a component for cybersecurity uh, to get a little bit more in depth there, so we'll expect that that will happen again uh, next time. Uh, so that is level funded. And then the last one is back in the operating budget. Um, in that same memo in the very back of your book, and also over email, there's a uh, negotiated settlements, has a few paragraphs describing what that is. That is where we fund um, the monies to pay for compensation plans for union contracts, collective bargaining agreements that haven't been settled yet. Luckily for us, all of our collective bargaining agreements are in the contract for FY25. Uh, however, our AMP comp plan is um, annually funded this way. So that's what's funded in that $349,000. That would cover everybody that is not under a, in, uh, covered under a union contract uh, for that. And to go along with that, we've been conducting a compensation and class uh, classification study for our AMP folks. That's still ongoing. We're not going to hit make, we're not going to hit the mark um, to to have that approved that May. However, we do need the money approved in the operating budget so that in September we can come back and uh, ask for that to be. So I know I said a lot, and I breezed through them. Uh, so if you want to go back to any with questions, feel free. But that's uh, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very intense, like it always. Very good. Uh, Michael, any questions? Mike, did you hear me? Muted. Any questions? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I was muted. Um, one uh, one quick question uh, regarding the debt services and that increase up to seven and change or whatever. That's FY25, so that'll include hopefully stuff that approved, gets approved in town meeting, right? Mr. Chairman? Is that the cause for the increase? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Espeo, so the only things that uh, there, there wouldn't be anything that's approved at this town meeting because we wouldn't have borrowed any of that money yet until next year and the payments are due the following year. So our FY26 okay. budget will certainly have um, costs in there for everything that's approved at this uh, May town meeting. Okay, I was confused how that worked. Yep. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Jim? Uh, no questions. Nick? Yeah, actually, no questions. Sarah? I have one question about the local transportation. So the 100000 level funded, that comes out of our operating budget, the rest comes out of revolving? Uh, yeah, so then one more piece that uh, comes from that TNC, that ride share right, right, right. fee that we get back. Yeah. How so much have we taken from revolving uh, to cover the cost for, well, last year, I guess? In the last year? Yeah, I mean, what is it, two years that we've done this? Or is this one year? Uh, no, we've done it for a few years, since, years, yeah. since 2020. And I know it's grown each year. It has. I suspect, I suspect it will level, level up at some point, point. but um, I know it's getting more and more popular. So I'm just wondering if we're going to have to, if we're going to face more coming out of our operating budget or how that's going to uh, work. Yeah, we will at some point. We, we, we're probably still another couple of years away from that because we're spending about 11000 a, a month, uh, which is about $130,000 a year. If we fund 100 from the operating budget and then there's 20 or 30 coming from the TNC program, that ride share fee that we get back, um, you know, that almost covers that. And then there's a little piece that will come out of the revolving account. And then there's money there in case it explodes. And now instead of 1,100 rides a month, we're doing 2,200 rides a month. There's that, there's that revolving balance that can cover any of that. So I, I think the idea is at some point we'll, it'll plateau. We'll know that this is what the program is, and then we can make a, a, a strategic decision on how we want to spend down that revolving account, how much to leave in it to cover, and then what our what our um, annual operating budget amount needs to be, and how do we want to build up to it. So say it's 
50,000 and we need to grow by 50,000, then we decide, all right, do we want to do that over five years, one year, two years? But we'll, we'll at least have the data of what the program is to be able to, to do that. And how many years of data do you need to figure that out? Like, Well, I would say we really only have one year of data because of COVID lingered, especially for that. And think about who uses it. Um, you know, slower probably getting back into sharing rides and, and things like that. So. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got nothing for you. Good thing. So, this is a. This is a this is uh, an approval, so. Ms. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the uh, operating and accommodate accounts budgets as presented. Okay, motion by Jimmy, second by Mike. Roll call vote. Michael? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Nick? Aye. Jim? Aye. Chairs and I. There you go. Thank you. Magic. Unbelievable. All right. Gary is always a huge help. Thank you. Thanks for sticking around, Gary. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome. Good night, Gary. Again, I'm sorry I didn't congratulate you, Sarah, for joining the board. I Thank meant you, to Gary. say that when I got here. Okay. Uh, town meeting index of articles. Yes. I just want to, not for, for Sarah's sake, well, when we approved the first round of um, the, the Warren art, the Warren articles, it's the index of the articles. Not, yeah. not we're not voting on. No, the, all right, good, good, good. Yeah. All right, so I have no questions on them, but I just wanted to make sure that. All right, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the annual, well, multi-times annual uh, request for the board to add the actual Warren articles onto the Warren. Uh, this is everything that's been submitted to date. Again, as uh, Select Matigas had mentioned, this is not a vote on individual warrant articles, just to accept all the articles that we received to put together the warrant. Um, I would urge, we have two more meetings before town meeting. Um, we will be requesting votes for any of the departments that report to the select board for any of their warrant articles. Uh, we have received requests from other departments that would like a board to you know, hear a presentation. Uh, you know, you have... Um, MBTA communities from Liz. Um, we also have uh, a couple of articles on here that Recreation wants to present to the board for to ask for your support. Um, but we can certainly ask anybody that you want any article on here that you want to hear about. We can get that uh, department here to present it to you uh, sometime in the next two meetings before town meeting. So uh, if you could, you know, take a take a few minutes. Uh, not tonight when you get home, but maybe tomorrow and, um, you know, review it and just see if there's anything of interest on here that you would you would want more level of detail on. And clearly we'll bring in all the select board uh, articles to you for a vote, but if there are any other department's articles that you wish to uh, learn mo more about, we can arrange that as well. Thank you. That being said. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the May Town Index of Articles as presented to second. us. Motion by Jim, second by Nick. Um, Roll call. Roll, yeah. Get there. Get there. Jim. Yeah, aye. Nick. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Mike. Aye. Okay. I'm an aye. There you go. Okay, so now we will do subcommittee. We'll start with uh, Nick. Oh, it's <laughs> nice. It's always a, it's always a real shoot in the dark sometimes. Never know. Um, I do have a couple of things, um, but Melissa's presentation actually I was going to say it was a whole bunch of time uh, coming out of me. So um, I I'll be providing a more in-depth update. Um, at our next meeting around uh, ISAC. Um, I haven't talked about them in a while. They've been uh, hard at work, and I know Paul and John and uh, the directors of uh, all the departments have been uh, working with them to uh, implement and, and create you know, more structure and planning. Um, you know, they have their meetings on Monday nights as well, uh, so timing-wise, I rarely get to attend, uh, but I'm meeting uh, with uh, David Hughes uh, this week to kind of catch up on some stuff and, and bring a report back, so that's exciting. Um, 
I hope everyone had a chance to see the solar eclipse. Uh, it was a pretty fun uh, experience. I, uh, I enjoyed it with my kids. Uh, you know, sky going dark for a few minutes. Hope no one went blind. Um, you know, and then, you know, I just want to, you know, point out that, um, you know, this past Saturday we held our annual town election um, and we had a 21% turnout, uh, which, you know, since I've been on the board, uh, we have not come near that. I think the closest we got was 16 or 17% one year. Uh, so 21% is, is great. Just over 3,500 people came out to vote. I know there was a large swath of folks who came out to do early voting and mail-in voting, which is fantastic. Um, you know, because we're trying to reduce uh, reduce barriers to access and get people the opportunity to vote. You know, when and where is convenient to them. Um, you know, but still a lot of great a lot of folks came out on Saturday, which is fantastic. Um, you know, and just a, a personal congratulations <coughs> to uh, anyone and everyone who ran uh, or does run. Right, I, I, I post this on Facebook and. Uh, I really do mean it when I say that, you know, there's a lot of hard work that goes into a campaign uh, and, you know, win, lose, or draw, you know, the the level of effort does not go unrecognized. Um, and, you know, it's important. It, it's it's the part of the engine that keeps all of this going, um, you know, and I mean, I, I preached it while I was chair, um, you know, volunteerism is tough, uh, you know, and having people step up to the plate and, you know, go through the process. Is is huge in my in my eyes. So thank you to everybody who ran. Congratulations to everyone who won. Um, you know, and here's to a, to another year until we're back at it again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, want to congratulate you on your re-election. We have 54 years in jail, which is a good thing. And I want to formally congratulate Sarah Colley on her um, election win, and formally welcome her to the select board. Good to have you on board, Sarah. And to echo Nick's uh, last statement, I wanted to give a tip of my cap to Amy Warfield and the uh, town clerk's office for running another great election. They always pull it off and they always, it's always very seamless. And with the early voting and the mail-ins and um, all day and counting, they we just, we kind of, um, we're very lucky to have Amy and her team and uh, it was a great election. I also want to thank everyone on the ballot who, um, who ran for office and who threw their hat into the ring and congratulate all the winners. And I want to thank all of you, my fellow board members, for your vote of confidence for your vice chair. And I'm excited to start another great year. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Mr. Chairman. Also, I want to echo, echo the election. Congratulate Sarah. What I loved about, I was down there for a couple hours and I love you could see uh, people holding signs on, uh, the uh, opponents of who they're holding the sign for, and yet they're still talking, joking, laughing. I mean, we're all residents, and we all have people we support, issues we support, but just to see that community feel, even among, I don't want to say rivals, but, but among people supporting the other person. I, I thought that was great. I love that. You like being Sarah. <laughs> um, a couple of things, Sculpture Park, we have an event coming up with uh, School of Rock at the Sculpture Park, May 11th. More information on that will be coming down the road. Uh, Selectman Mirandi and I met with the Sculpture Park Rec Department DPW Planning Dep uh, Board this morning uh, to discuss the logistics of the uh, summer fundraiser, the Pigs on Parade. The pigs will be installed on the common. We're getting... Uh, we're getting donations now. Well, people are sponsoring the pigs. They're going to be uh, painted and on display uh, at some point uh, to be determined on the common. And with regards to the fire department, uh, another busy month in the month of March. 374 calls total, including 254 emergency medical calls, 13 motor vehicle crashes. But the two highlights for the month is they avoided two potential disasters. They had a trail of fire that was just outside the Leahy Clinic emergency room. They also had a generator fire at Marshall Simons Middle School, but they were able to contain both fires, which were next to the building, without any damage being caused to the building. So kudos to the fire department for their quick response and their efficient work. That's it. Hey, thank you. So, Sarah, um, this, you have no subcommittees yet. We're gonna, work, we're gonna work on that. that I mean, absolutely. Sure. Right. I just wanna echo the, the sentiments about the election and thank Amy and her team in, in the town clerk's office for pulling off a, a flawless election, both day of and the weeks leading up with early voting and uh, mail-in. Also wanna thank the town of Burlington for coming out 
to vote. Um, you know, 21% is great, and hopefully that's a trend moving up and getting more people out there interested in what's going on in our town and more people running for things so that people have a choice. So thank you, Burlington vote Voters, for your engagement. And just finally, thank you to this board and the administration for being so welcoming. Um, as far as, you go ahead, you got something else? You got your head? Oh, no, it's done right. I was it's just, no, I'm just ready to. You ready to go home? I'm ready to go home, but I was just stretching back because we still have. Uh, yeah. I, well, I looked at me, but yeah. Michael, I already got you, right? Yeah, here you go. Okay. Okay. Get on. All right, leave me alone. Okay. So, as the uh, chairman, thank you very much for making me chair tonight. Uh, all I can do is echo what everybody said already. Uh, it's not an easy process to get out there and put your name out there and uh, run for a position in town where, um, you know, at, at some point in the next three years, uh, two years, whatever your term is, you're going to get scrutinized left and right. Uh, you're going to be looked at as like you made the wrong decision and everything else. So uh, I'm glad that everybody is on the same page in this room. I'm glad that we can sit here and discuss things and move forward and do what's right for the town of Burlington. That's all I have to say. It's all about Burlington and nothing else. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for the sake of the national championship basketball game, uh, <laughs> I'm brief. I know they usually are anyway, but I just want to echo a lot of the same comments of the board. Uh, congratulations to Joe and welcome to Sarah. Uh, and again, I, I can't say enough for all the people that put their names on the ballot. Um, just by putting your name on the ballot, you make the town a better place. Uh, you make these races competitive, and I know how difficult it must be uh, to put your name out there. So it means a lot to us when people, you know, are willing to put their name out there and get involved in the town. So that's great. And just a second comment. Uh, you mentioned the high turnout and there's been some changes to the election laws with early voting and mail-in voting. Um, all those additional complexities have really added to the workload of our town clerk's office and they've just, again, they've always amazed us. They've just done an unbelievable job uh, with the election and sure. um, they've just uh, exceed our expectations every time and, and again, I just want everyone to know that their job has gotten a lot harder the last few years with all these changes in the laws and a lot of additional work and uh, they do it with uh, with ease and with class and I'm very grateful for everything that Amy and her staff were able to do for the town. Thank you. Absolutely. And on that note, Mr. V uh, yeah, Vice Chair. I just want to add one thing is that the, uh, the police station website was shared with all of you to take a sneak peek. It's great. Get on there and uh, take a look. It will be shared more widespread uh, over the next couple of days. Great. Thank you. Mike, were you clapping or were you just have your hand up there for a second? He was clapping. He was yeah. clapping. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> and on that note. Uh, let, let us go to watch the uh, basketball game. All right. All right. <laughs> so on that note, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call vote. Michael? Yes, aye. Jimmy? Aye. Nick? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Aye. Good night, people. Have a